team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refi that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa 10 Federal Credit Union with their got that promotion. They'll give you up to $500 for your debt. Are you serious, coach? That's right, Johnny. Alcoa 10 will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa 10. Alcoa 10. Alcoa 10. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. When I made the move to my own studio, I was worried about this. I was worried about that. I was worried about, hey, did I get this piece of equipment? Did I get that piece of equipment? Does that sound good? Does that not sound good? One thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture. Because office furniture outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and get this, set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. Deep down the middle's got his man, and he's gone! Jason Swain, touchdown! It's time for the Swain event. Guess what time it is, my, my, my time. You can check your iPhone, better say it's our time. With your host, Jason Sway. My man. Real sports talk for the real sports fan. All you chumps are going to bow when I whoop him. It's time for the Swain event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Give me two of the and a red flag. Good morning, individuals. Boys and girls of all ages, all races, all fans of all different teams out here in the great world. It is Friday, best day of the week. Swain event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Top 100 barbecue restaurant in America. Our telephone number is 865-200-5503. That is the Be Dry Waterproofing Hotline, BeDry.com. Ben McKee, Jason Swain, taking you from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on 8.50 a.m. And 100.9, Rocky Top Sports. Free Swain Event app, Swain Event TV, where you can check us out on Periscope, Facebook Live, and on YouTube. Thank you for making the Swain Event part of your morning. Benjamin. Good morning, individual man. Look like you're ready for a baseball game. I am ready for a baseball game. I know uh, Seth Stokes is not the biggest Jersey guy. or He's not a Jersey guy at all. He despises them uh, for grown-ups. Uh, I know you're not the biggest Jersey guy either, but when the Yankees are playing the Red Sox in the playoffs, the greatest robbery in all of sports, arguably, it, it, you have to break out the Yankees jersey. So I'm pumped for tonight. I'm ready to go. Ready to be heartbroken. Um, I'm ready to do this. But it's Friday. We got to get down on Friday. So it's ex- exciting times despite there being a bye week. For me at least. Hey man. Uh, we get a chance to sit back as Tennessee fans and just and just chill. Just chill and you know watch other teams um either struggle or do very well and kind of see where we are measure like a measuring stick. And so that will be this weekend. My blood pressure will be hopefully um, normal. Uh, I won't get upset. I won't get bothered. I can just watch football and not have a care in the world. But I, but I probably will get upset if I see other teams that um, – programs are not as, as good as Tennessee's or have the, the resources like Tennessee have success, I probably will get mad and jealous. But uh, it's going to be a good weekend. Florida plays LSU. Uh, that's always going to be a tough test there. Uh, Alabama gets a, a, a practice game uh, inside of the SEC against Arkansas. Uh, there's going to be some really good games. You got the Red River shootout between Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, is, it, is it just me or – 
is Tom Herman not really making an impact like we thought he would there at Texas? I'm starting to begin to think that it's not just the Texas coaches, but it, it is Texas. It is that culture. It is the boosters. It is the donors. It is the infrastructure. Um, more resources than any school in the country, and they still find themselves in the middle of the road there in the the Big 12. They've had Charlie Strong. They've had Mac Brown. They've had Tom Herman. Three different coaches. You haven't had the success. Are we going to keep blaming on the coach? Or all the dudes with the cowboy hats and all the oil money going to start looking at, looking at themselves in the mirror here? Yeah, I – Texas definitely feels like Tennessee in terms of it, it, it's a power grab constantly. N- instead of everybody wanting to come together and be one, everybody is worried about being the person responsible for the football program being a winning football program. But I do think that – Texas has been fairly impressive this season. Um, They blew out USC, and I know USC is down this year. But then the next week, Texas turns around and beats a top 25 TCU team, 31-16, which is a very good TCU team. I've watched them play a couple times this year, took Ohio State to about midway through the fourth quarter. And then last week, they did um, only beat Kansas State 19-14, but I was listening to Bruce Feldman and he he's very close with Tom Herman, and he kind of said they were just very conservative that game and were okay with being conservative that game because they knew Kansas State could not really move the ball on Texas's defense. Uh, so it was run left, run right, run up the middle, let's get out of here with a win and uh, get ready for Oklahoma. So I'm interested to see uh, Texas and Oklahoma tomorrow. I think Oklahoma wins, but it does feel like Sam Ellinger, Texas's quarterback, does show up for the big games. We'll see, man. I know one thing. Georgia has lost two commitments in the last 28 to 48 hours. Let me holler at you. Let and me you. as a Tennessee fan, that should make you happy. A couple of days ago, it was Jalen Hazelwood, Hazelwood, who was a five-star receiver, the third-rated player in the country, according to 247 Sports. And he decommitted from Georgia. looks like he's going to Miami. And then uh, the Kula High School defensive back um, and wide receiver Jalen Perry announced his decommitment from Georgia on Thursday night. And so, oh, man, what is going on at Georgia? What is going on? A defensive back is on the market? A good one too. What is going on? I wonder. I wonder if it has anything to do with um, the baseball player, um, because these it happened like together. Right. Um, I don't know. I'm not speculating, but I'm just wondering if it had anything to do with uh, these decommitments. But it is time to call up Mr. Jalen Perry if you are Tennessee. If you're really any school in the SEC or outside, Clemson, Ohio State, it is time to to pounce on a decommitment, a Georgia decommitment. So let, let me ask you, since you are kind of in the shoes of these young fellas at one point, would, would a situation with the baseball player dissuade you from going to a particular school? Because I don't no. – if I if I had to put myself in those shoes, I don't think it would dissuade me if it was just one incident. If it was an incident after incident after incident, then it probably would dissuade me from going to a school. But just one incident, I, I don't think it would. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't bother me one bit. So, Well, do you think this just happens uh, just out of nowhere, or do you think it's a coincidence? I, I or? just think it's a coincidence if I had to put money on it. It wouldn't. It wouldn't bother me too much. That's one person. One person doesn't speak for an entire culture or an entire school. But I'm different, I guess, than some of these whippersnappers. Oh, out 100%. here. Oh, one hundred percent. You know, everyone's different. So uh, I wonder if it had anything to do with what happened with the baseball player yelling a racial slur out at, at the base at the football game towards Justin Fields, but. Uh, it wouldn't bother me if I was any of these recruits. I just wonder the reason for the decommitment. 
Like, I always want to know the reason. Yeah, me too. Like, it, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're Jalen Hazelwood because they do have a young quarterback. They do have young talent, young offensive linemen, really good players. So, you're going to play for a championship. You're going to have opportunities to compete against the best teams in the SEC in prime time. Maybe the Demet- Demetrius uh, Robertson get from Cal – Maybe that has something to do with it. You know, he has three years or so left to play at Georgia. Maybe Hazelwood coming in with his three or four years that he has planned to play at Georgia. Maybe he sees that as a problem with him catching balls. Maybe that's maybe that's it. But all I know is if you're Tennessee, you see that breaking news go across the stream about a Georgia commitment, decommitting, it's time to make some phone calls. It is time to get on the horn. And uh, maybe that is two players, really good players, that are not going to Georgia. They don't play against Tennessee in the future. Now, it, it sounds absurd because Hazelwood is um, regarded as the best, if not one of the best wide receivers in the entire country. And Jalen Perry is a top 170 player in the country. Do you at all think that maybe Georgia told them to take a hike? Hell no. I don't think so either, but I, it, it could. You never know. Heck no. I, I don't think so either, but – Georgia, I think there are two schools that are recruiting at a level to where they could tell a a big four star or big time five star. We're gonna go a different direction. There's one school, in my opinion, that can do that. I think it's Alabama and Georgia. I think Georgia is recruiting at that level to where, like these two decommitments. Yes, it, it would be nice to sign those guys, and they very may well, but it doesn't hurt them. Georgia is in their, what, second year of recruiting like this. Alabama has been recruiting like this for for years and years and years, and they just didn't have any room. Georgia still has, I think, plenty of room. Georgia's not at Alabama's level just yet recruiting. They've had a a year or two. They need to string together more than just a a year or two to reach Alabama's level. It's not really that time of the year where that really partakes. That's usually closer to December. January, February time frame where schools tell a player, hey, uh, we're, we're going to go a different direction. Yeah, I just, I, I think I think these kids just found themselves um, looking at other schools and they want to definitely look around. And in Hazelwood's case, looks like he's going to go to Miami. We'll see what happens with Jalen Perry. DB, Tennessee needs a DB. Does Tennessee get there in the hunt? Or do you put all uh, your eggs in the basket of uh, LSU commit from West Tennessee? Do uh, you do you Maurice do that? Hampton. Do you do that? Um, do you try to go out and get MUS's Maurice Hampton, who is finally going to take a visit? Do you show him that he's a guy that he wants, and no one else? I all, don't know. I, all I know is if. If there is a, if you are a defensive back in the United States of America, honestly, I don't care if you're outside of the U.S. of A. If you are a defensive back on the planet Earth, Tennessee better be talking to him. That's all I know. I, I don't care if you're a five star. I don't care if you're a zero star. If Coach Pruitt thinks he can play defensive back at the University of Tennessee, he needs to be talking to him. Hey man, gotta have some more DBs for sure. Eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three. We'll take our first break of the day here on the show. 865 again 25503 B Dry Waterproofing Hotline. Be right back. You don't have to take an L just because you can't listen to the Swain event live. You can catch up on the podcast posted daily on the app, online, and on iTunes. Backed by popular demand, shop tax-free at Better Mattress during the month of October. Save hundreds of dollars store-wide. Better Mattress will pay your sales tax on any purchase. My Better Mattress has me sleeping better than ever. And it's handcrafted in East Tennessee, so I know it is made to last by good people who care about the quality of their work. Better Mattress makes it so easy to choose a mattress, you can get started right now. Visit BEDRmattress.com and click on Mattress Prescription. Answer a few questions and they'll send you some options to start with plus at better mattress shoppers sleep worry free if you don't like it after 100 nights they'll swap it out for you and your better mattress will come with a 20-year warranty shop better mattress tax-free this month only good night just got better 
Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle chicken salad, the chicken tender sandwich, or the kitchen sink burrito filled with brisket, pulled pork, and chicken. Not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the kitchen sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of the Island Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. Do you want a custom thing tumbler or bottle to show off your team spirit every day of the week? Well, look no further than Game Time Sidekicks. Every design has you, the fan, in mind. Their tumblers and bottles are double-walled, vacuum-insulated stainless steel, and their quality is second to none in the market. From stainless steel sippy cups to tumblers and sports bottles, Game Time Sidekicks offer something for the fan of all ages to rep their team with. They have many different logo options, so fans will have something they are proud to carry around all the time. Use promo code SWAIN at checkout to get 20% off of your entire purchase at GameTimeSidekicks.com. They also offer $5 flat rate shipping. Be sure to check out the Game Time Workshop on the website and customize your Tumblr to make it one of a kind with things like your nickname, number, or initials. Game Time Sidekicks. Show your colors and carry your team. You're driving home, flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror. You pull over, step out of your car, and the next thing you know, you're being arrested for driving under the influence. Now what do you do? We all should be responsible. But remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza at 865-540-8300. The investigative teams at the Garza Law Firm know the justice system inside and out. They utilize cutting-edge technologies and investigative methods to prepare your specific case. Before you plead guilty to any criminal charges, call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza. Put his number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300, because you never know when you or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty. Say Garza. 865-540-8300. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. You're listening to the Swain Event. And you know this, man. GR Vaughn on the text box says, good morning, Swain. Listening in Lee County, Florida, GBO. Good morning, RG. Lookout Vaughn says, Tyson Helton. I know this guy is probably a great OC, and I know that he probably not the main reason that our offense is struggling, but this guy is making a huge salary to call plays. If we are on our own goal line, and it's third and two yards, and he doesn't, Tell Banks to hang on to the freaking ball and get us two yards instead of pulling in, putting in Jordan. That really worries me. Some of the stuff we do ain't that hard. Go Vols. Well, I mean, you shouldn't have to use German Banks every time there's third and short or a sh- short yardage situation. You should be able to trust Tim Jordan to go pick up two yards and follow the, his blocks. If Banks cannot hold on to the ball, he can't play. Um, I don't think it's all on Tyson Hilton. I really don't. But $1.2 million is a lot of money. Period. When Coach Former was let go, do you know Coach Former, excuse me, was only making a little bit over $2 million? Now, the coach's salaries are ridiculous. Pruitt probably makes that in half of the year. Pruitt is like 3.987, something like that. I mean, he's doing he's doing well. I mean, the salaries have 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 went up and the salaries for coordinators has also went up. 1.2 million dollars is a long is a lot of money for this offense to look like it's um look this season. Now, a lot of it isn't his fault. I mean, he inherited a a roster, a personnel group that maybe doesn't fit what he wants to do, what the staff as a whole want to do. You have to keep in mind 
that this roster was brought here, majority of this roster was brought here offensively to fit what Butch Jones wanted to do on offense, which was um, east and west running, zone blocking, shotgun all the time, passive, rarely aggressive. And now you're trying to change the mentality and the culture, but you still need bodies that fit what you're trying to do. So um, that's part of it. And maybe Tyson Helton is is learning how to call plays in SEC. It makes you wonder what his role was at USC. I don't think he called plays all the time. I don't know if T. Martin called plays all the time. I think there was a really – there was a few times – that Tyson Hilton had a role where he maybe called some plays uh, one year or another. But he didn't have a significant role. This is the first time when Tyson Hilton's coached at this level. First time in a long time. And maybe he's not ready. But I'm willing to let some more games be played, let things shake out a little bit more before I point the finger at one person or not. I think it's a combination of things, but I need to see a little bit more from Tyson Held. I want to see him evolve. I want to see him come back after the bye week, do some self-scouting, go, okay, yeah, we are running the ball a little bit too much on first down. Let's let's change it up here. Or, yeah, when it's third down and this distance, we tend to go here. I mean, I, I'm, I'm curious to see the run chart. How many of our runs go to the left side? Because it seems like every time we run the ball, it's going to the left side behind Trey Smith instead of behind Drew Richmond and those guys on the right side of the line of scrimmage. And I don't know that that is necessarily a bad plan with the current state of the offensive line, but there definitely needs to be a mix-up. And that point that you made about running to the left side, Gary Danielson – pointed that out early on in the football game midway through the first quarter pointing out that okay the first four or five runs have been the uh the trace to Trey Smith's side and Tennessee did try to switch it up at one point I want to say it was the second run of the football game or maybe it was the second series of the game for Tennessee's offense they actually put Trey Smith at right tackle and ran behind Trey Smith at right tackle to, to, to try to run the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Uh, Sean R. ready to watch Bucks and Randy Sanders go 5-1 and one tomorrow, ETSU. And uh, Swain, how many miles will the staff put on the private jets tonight going to high school games? Oh, it's going to be a lot. I think you're going coast to coast. I mean, you got players out there in California that you want to go see. Toe toe Henry To'o To'o, baby, one of the best linebackers in the country. And it's down, it looks like, between Alabama and Tennessee. That's so, that's so weird because he is a legitimate five-star linebacker. I want to say he's the number third, the number three. Uh, well, according to 24-7, he is the number two outside linebacker in the country, the number four player in the state of California, and the 37th overall player in the country. And you haven't heard a lot of talk about him like we have – Darnell Wright or Maurice Hampton or Wanye Morris. Because he's he's in California, and Crystal Ball has him 50% UCLA and 50% Alabama. I don't know if I agree. I think Tennessee is, is in the mix big time, and there's connections to the Tennessee staff. There's connections to the Alabama staff. So – uh, Kevin Simon, former Vol, who is former Vol linebacker, who is on the staff, he played his high school ball at De La Salle High School. Where does Henry To'o, To'o go to school? De La Salle High School. And so there's connections there. Also, Alabama with Tosh Lapoy. Um, he's connected. Tosh Lapoy is a West Coast guy. And um, so there's connections. There's connections from Alabama. There's connections with Tennessee. Um, that's going to be a really interesting um recruitment down the stretch. He is a 37th rated player in the country. Um, he is basically almost a perfect prospect, 98 um, rating here on the 247 Sports Composite that takes a average of all the other recruiting sites, ESPN and Rivals, and come up with the 24-7 Sports Composite. So I'm pretty sure we will be – Visiting the West Coast, I'm pretty sure we will be in West Virginia. 
checking in on Darnell Wright, and I'm pretty sure we'll be in Charlotte checking in on Kovar's couch. ATL checking in all, on all the commitments we have. Wanye Morris, yeah, got some, got some, got some commitments in Georgia. So from from Roman Harrison uh, to to all the way to Wanye Morris, there are some players in Georgia who are committed that we will be checking on. So um, this is probably the most important, besides official visits on your campus. Probably the most important weekend for Tennessee's coaching staff is to be able to travel during the bye week and. Show off that brand. When you are at a high school game and you see those coaches there with their with their polo on, with that school brand on there, the kids turn their head to see who's who's in town. Tennessee, is it Alabama, is it Auburn, is it Clemson, Ohio State? So a good opportunity for Tennessee to really show off that power T and show off that brand. I mean, come on, Toe Toe. It's perfect, man. The T right there, we just make it a power T. And then we can get uh Talia Tagovailoa in here. I, I'm I'm sure they have some similarities uh, in, in their life. I'm fascinated by his recruitment, though, because like I said, you haven't really heard a lot about him. And I would argue where Tennessee's current recruiting class sits, I would argue that he's almost as important, if not more important, than Darnell Wright. Because uh, the, hear me out, hear me out. You may all right. I can understand you disagreeing, and maybe I'm reaching. But the reason I say that is because. If signing day was today, you already at least have two tackles that look to be good for you going forward in Chris Akprogane and Wanye Morris. I'm tired of seeing Jonathan Congo on the field at outside linebacker and would prefer to get Toe Toe in here at outside linebacker. And granted, he won't have – he not as likely to have the immediate impact as a Darnell Wright because of the nature of the position. But Tennessee's inside linebacker situation looks better than the outside linebacker situation – and right now, Tennessee doesn't really have anybody coming in at outside linebacker. Uh, Progane is probably going to play guard, and so that's a fair point. Yeah, he, he's probably going to play guard. Um, Darnell Wright and um, one year, if you can get him, get those guys. You're talking about tackles for the next three or four years, and then possibly you can move in Trey Smith, um, and then you get Brandon Kennedy for next year. That's a good line. I mean, offensive line has a chance to be pretty good next year. Uh, young, but but pretty good, and um, I think the offensive line is the biggest, the biggest um, weakness on this football team. The offensive line, because defensively they've been able to kind of hold their own um, for for the most part, but offensive line needs major major help. And so I don't know if I would. If I could rank the importance of all the the recruits that we have, uncommitted or committed, but but Darnell Wright would be up at the top. I mean, he is he's important. Him and Wanye are very very important. So that, that, and that's fair. I like I said, Darnell. I'm just trying to have make folks realize how important this get would be because right now you don't have anybody at outside he's a, linebacker. No, he's important. He's important. But so I guess what I'm saying he's is more important than Darnell Wright. And that's fair. That's fair. I, I do think he's close to being as important as Darnell Wright. Like, it would be as big of a get as Darnell Wright, in my opinion, just for the simple fact that right now you don't really have anybody that can come off the edge and get to the quarterback. And, yes, offensive line needs major help, but so does that front seven, especially after you're going to lose Alexis Johnson, Kyle Phillips, shot total. You're losing a lot going into next year. And I, is Kongbo a senior? I hope he is. I can't remember off the top of my head. Be I'm, nice. I'm be nice, being, be nice to combo. I'm sorry. I'm being disrespectful this morning. I Man, apologize. he ain't being disrespectful. He just – he makes it – combo makes it tough. See, and that <laughs> – He makes it tough because he hasn't done anything. He he is a senior. He's a – I got nervous for a second. I, I Googled Jonathan Combo. It said redshirt junior. I looked up and thankfully it said 2017 football roster. I got nervous there for a second. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a senior, man. Be nice. I'm sorry. I'm be sorry. nice. Be nice. <sighs> He's just not having a good career. I tell you what, though, on that first play of the game against Georgia, he put a pretty good lick on on Jake Fromm, but it was all downhill from there. Oh man, eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three. We are working like heck to get on Grant Ramey, Go Vols twenty four seven. 
uh, basketball media days was yesterday. And you better enjoy at Muskofield while you have them. Excuse me. You better enjoy him while you have them because they don't make them like Admiral Schofield. And it's going to be a long time before we get another one of uh, these guys. I mean, smart, uh, leader. I mean, he's good. He's, he's going to be one of the best players in the country. This is going to be a special basketball season. Special basketball season. 865-200-5503. Be right back. For a replay of East Day's Swain Event TV, like us on Facebook. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can. Because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technicians to see how we can get your phone working today. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not available in all states. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. Beatty Chevrolet is celebrating 85 years of low prices. And during Truck Month, choose from over 400 trucks and SUVs, all deeply discounted. Like a new Silverado, now 25% off. A new Equinox, now 20% off. And a certified pre-owned 15 Equinox or Terrain, now $16,995. Plus, buy with confidence with the Beatty Warranty for Life. Big selection and even bigger savings. That's why it's better at Beatty Chevrolet. It's number 232 savings off MSRB, including all dealer savings and manufacturer incentives with approved credit. Most finance for GNF offer expires 831. Big Orange Football is better alongside another Tennessee tradition, Mrs. Grissom's Salad. Mrs. Grissom's ready-made snacks and meals are perfect for game day. Crowd favorites like the select pimento cheese and cranberry pecan chicken salad are delicious and easy to grab and go right from the grocery store. Going to the game? Visit Mrs. Grissom's in Vol Village for the must-have Panini Grill Pimento Cheese Hot Dog. Man, select the best. Select Tennessee's own Mrs. Grissom's. I'm Vince Moore, wide receiver, VFL 1991, and you're listening to the Swain Event. Around the SEC, powered by 42nd Street Marketing, your game-winning play call for design, marketing, and branding. Call Mike at 865-382-7007 or go to 42SD.com. That is 42nd Street. Design, branding, custom website design, logo design, and print design. That is what 42nd Street design, uh, that's what they specialize in. Take pride in creating truly custom designs with the client experience in mind. They don't mean to brag or anything, but their designs are 100% custom. I know because Swain Event dot com was built from scratch. Uh, nothing says East Tennessee like the Swain Event website. It is phenomenal, and thank you to the great folks over there at 42nd Street. Uh, Will, Mike, Jana did a great job communicating. 
and making sure that uh, they got exactly what I wanted on the website. And now we're designing business cards. I mean, the nice, thick business cards, professional looking. Uh, so we're working on a design that, that really speaks uh, Swain event when we're out here uh, meeting potential clients and, and meeting folks. I always want to look professional and 42nd Street Design can help you do that. All right, we're going around the SEC, Ben. Where are we landing today? All over the SEC because I want to get your thoughts on some of this weekend's games. All right. Uh, we'll start off with the, the crappy games. Alabama, Arkansas, Crimson Tide are 35-point favorites. Vanderbilt, Georgia. Georgia is 26.5-point favorites. Do you think any either or Vanderbilt, Arkansas covers? Um, I don't think Arkansas covers. I think for Alabama, when you whenever you take out – uh, Tiger Olova, and you put in Jalen Hurts, they're not trying to just run the ball, run the clock out. Hurts is trying to put in work too. He wants to get his stats. He wants to make plays. And so what happens is your second team is just as good as the Arkansas's first team, and they're going to continue to score. So I think um, Alabama will cover, uh, even though that game is on the road. It doesn't matter. And then what's the, uh, what's the line for the Vanderbilt game? 26 and a half. At Georgia. Mm. I picked Georgia to cover. I think Vanderbilt will struggle to get anything going on offense, and their defense has been up and down this season. And I don't think they match up very well against Georgia's What's, offense. What time is that football game? 7.30. Oh, Georgia covers. Night game in Athens? Yeah, Georgia covers. I think uh, I think Georgia was not – and I give credit to Tennessee too because they ca- caused um, some turnover opportunities. But – uh, Georgia looked a little bit flat last week, and they had a shot uh, at a couple deep balls, and they did not connect. I think uh, they connect on some of those. I think Miko Harbin gets going more. Um, I just think Georgia takes care of business against Vanderbilt at home, night game. Um, I'm a little nervous about picking Georgia cover because I have a feeling that Vandy will, but I'm going to go Georgia on this one. I like it. And then there are four other games, two of them – I am sold on who I think is going to win. The other two, I'm just kind of going with my gut. The two that I'm confident, I think Mississippi State beats Auburn this weekend. Uh, I, th- I think Mississippi State's front seven with Jeffrey Simmons and Montrez Sweat make life incredibly hard for an Auburn offensive line that lost both its tackles lo- last week. Uh, and I think Nick Fer- Fitzgerald does just enough against Auburn's great defense to pull out the win. And then I think LSU beats Florida by 14, 17 points. I don't think Florida is a good football team. I know they destroyed Tennessee. I know they squeaked out a win against Mississippi State last week. But I think that, that was a product of their opponent and not necessarily indicative of their talent level uh, or their overall ability of that team. Things are about to get really real for Joe Moorhead in Starkville because he came in inheriting a really good roster with some NFL players and experienced quarterback. And uh, they have fell on their face. They've been the most disappointing team in the SEC, according to Chris Lowe. And you guys, uh, I put them up there in, in South Carolina. But uh, when he loses his talent, then it's really, really going to get real because LSU is getting better. Um, Texas A&M, as far as yard per play, and I don't think that's going to change versus a struggling Mississippi State offense. Nick Fitzgerald uh, getting suspended first game of the season. He has not found his rhythm and his return. I think Auburn wins. I don't know if it's better for Tennessee if Auburn wins or, or if they lose. I don't really know. I think a L will humble you and make you go back to the drawing board and, and practice a little bit harder. I think a win um, for for Auburn uh, for Tennessee in Tennessee's case, um, Auburn can kind of feel good about maybe playing bad and still win. I don't know. Um, I don't think it really matters if Auburn wins or loses, but I just don't see Mississippi State being able to score enough on Auburn. So I got Auburn there. And then um, I'm with you on the LSU-Florida pick, man. LSU presents a lot of problems for Florida. I don't see those guys getting off uh, press covers on the, on the outside. Um, I don't think Florida has enough playmakers on offense to um, get big chunk plays against LSU. I think LSU gets it done on the road. So uh, a lot of I think it's a lot of good games in the SEC well, then to there's watch. The two toss-up games that I do not have a read on, uh, Missouri-South Carolina, I pick South Carolina mainly because it's at williams Bryce. Uh, I I do think that offense gets going eventually for South Carolina with Jake Bentley uh, against a subpar Missouri defense. But I am concerned about Drew Locke uh, going up against Will Muschamp's defense. But if there's one aspect 
of a Will Muschamp coach team that I, I'm going to believe in is going to be the defense. Uh, and then the other one, which might be the game of the night, number 13, Kentucky, which is very weird to say, trying to move to 6-0 and uh, in College Station. I know earlier this week you, you said that you believe Texas A&M wins that football game. But I think Benny Snell is going to, to have another big game. And as Jimbo continues to try to switch the culture, uh, Texas A&M received a lot of crit criticism last year for being soft. And I think that may rear its ugly head a little bit again, going up against a very, very physical Kentucky football team. I, I like A&M because I like Kellen Mond. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the development of him under Jimbo Fisher. I think he continues to get better. And his legs – are a, a big reason why I'm picking Texas A&M. And I think Jimbo is getting the attention of these guys. They got an opportunity to, to come within um, a possession, a, a, a couple plays of beating Clemson at home. Um, they hung in there with Alabama for a lot of that football game, but it just was out, man. Uh, I think Jimbo Fisher is having more success at Texas A&M, uh, well, quicker success, um, it takes that in that people people thought. And I'm not talking about just a record. I'm talking about um, how they're playing. They're playing uh, a whole lot better than they did last year, um, and they look like they they improved uh, greatly. And so I have them beating Kentucky. I, I, Kentucky got to lose sometime, right? At and some man, point, if Kentucky wins this game, they are legitimate SEC East contenders. They are. And let's see, I'm looking at the rest of their schedule. They're currently 5-0. and If they were to win, they would be 6-0. and And in order to get to 10 wins, they have Vanderbilt on their schedule, which is a win. They have they travel to Missouri. I think that's a toss-up because it's on the road, and Drew Locke has the potential to go off. And then Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State, Louisville, and then Georgia at the beginning of the year. So I – if they can beat Texas A&M, I think they get the 10 wins with those four remaining wins being Vanderbilt, Tennessee, MTSU, and Louisville. They got a chance, man. Golly. And then if you if you can win that 50-50 game with Missouri, that toss-up game with Missouri, that's 11 wins. And if they do drop to Georgia, what if Georgia falters against Auburn down the, or down Florida. the way? Or Florida. Well, yeah. So <laughs> we, we live in a world where it is – a legit scenario where Kentucky may end up playing Alabama in the SEC championship game. Oh, man, those those Bama-Kentucky fans are going to be crazy. The Kentucky basketball fans and the Alabama football fans, oh, man, they're going to lose it. I don't know what they would do in that situation because – They'll hang out in Gatlinburg. That That is for sure. At the Strip, <laughs> there's that there's that little sports memorabilia store. Yeah. And that's where they are. They always hang out in Gatlinburg, man. Like, wait a minute. You from Kentucky, but you got a – Bama decal on your window, then you step out the car, you got a Kentucky basketball shirt. What the? Well, what the, is going on? The reason they go to Gatlinburg is because they can get their house divided Alabama Kentucky license plate there. My goodness, I, I hate those license plates. I I I don't I hate them. You you better not. You better not. I don't let, have a problem with them. You better not. I know. I know the fiance has you know no, some no, Auburn no, no, ties, no, 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 no. but I know she's not a big Auburn fan like that. No, I swear. I converted her. She was a big yeah. Auburn fan when uh, we first started dating back in 2013. No, we started dating in 2011, uh -huh. 2013. I was thinking of the Tennessee Auburn game in uh -huh. 2013. Don't get in trouble. But in 11, she was a diehard Auburn fan, and now I have converted her to the point when we go to the game next week in Auburn, she will be dressed out from head to toe in Tennessee orange. And last night or yesterday, she even posted on Facebook, can't wait to live in Knoxville. So I, I have okay, converted okay, her. Okay, okay, I but I, 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 was, I, like I was going to say, I, being, in the mil being a military brat growing up, I met plenty of families who one the husband went to one SEC school and then the wife went to another SEC school. In that instance, I understand no. there being a house divided. No, I'm not moving from this stance, okay? I'm not moving. Jimmy, you have a truck. Karen, now that is fair. You have a car that or is a fair. truck. Jimmy, you get your own damn license plate. Karen, she get her own damn now, license plate. Okay, I, I agree with if that. Karen wants to wear a uh, 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 Missouri grad license plate, then then let your car wear a Missouri license plate. It's your car. Jimmy, you went to Tennessee. Be a man and rock a Tennessee license plate on your pickup truck. None of that house divided crap. Oh, I agree with the that. license plate. Now, what if there's a 
you said truck and then the wife is driving yeah, but she, she, she might have an suv or something for yeah kids, but what know? what if there's a third car that's a, a minivan that is for family purposes and family trips and the neutral car that it, it's 50 50 they both own it mm -mm. nope 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 i don't want to see any more house divided license plates it's the worst i will say I haven't, se I haven't seen one in a while it's the worst which man. means i'm i'm going to huntsville this this afternoon i will probably see one driving home now. man up man up husbands man up you get your own license plate you get her her own license plate house divided <laughs> tennessee alabama alabama auburn georgia florida that's the one i don't understand is alabama auburn i don't know how anybody could put an alabama and an auburn license plate on the same car man up attaboys coming up next here in the swain event stay with us At work? Can't call in? Don't feel bad. You can talk to the guys on the text box. It's part of the free Swain Event app. Today will be mostly sunny with a high of 88 and a low around 67. Tomorrow there is a 20% chance of showers, mostly sunny with a high of 87 and a low of 67. Sunday, another 20% chance of rain, mostly sunny skies, and a high in the upper 80s. Weather on the Swain Event is brought to you by Be Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Be Dry can help. BeDry.com Gentlemen, when it comes to taking care of your health, sometimes the first step is the hardest. Low T Center is making it easier to take that first step. It all starts with knowing the numbers that are essential to a man. Testosterone levels, blood pressure, cholesterol, prostate, and thyroid. Low T Center makes it quick and easy to get all these levels checked and more. Low T Center specializes in men's health and has expanded their services, including sleep apnea, low thyroid, hypertension, severe allergies, high cholesterol, diabetes, and annual physicals, along with testosterone replacement therapy. The physicians at Low T Center not only want to help you feel good again, they want to help you prevent any serious health problems moving forward. Now, with the holistic approach to your overall health and wellness, Low T Center is making it more convenient for men to take care of their health, and most health insurance is accepted. They'll even verify for you. Take the first step for your health and call 865-392-1388. That's 865-392-1388 or go to LowTCenter.com. Reinventing men's health care. Do you have cracks in your foundation? A wet basement or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give Be Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, Be Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. Be Dry only uses high quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words Better call Be Dry. Reach out to Be Dry today at 865-662-5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865-662-5238. Remember, better call Be Dry. It's almost football time in Tennessee, which means it's time to get geared up at Alumni Hall. Find the best selection of Nike, Nike Golf, Tommy Bahama, and all those retro logos you love. Don't forget about your game day crew. Plenty of selection for the ladies, the little balls, and to upgrade their tailgate. Shop now at one of their six convenient locations in Tennessee or 24-7 at alumnihall.com. One in eight American women will be diagnosed with breast cancer during their lifetime. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Premier Surgical Associates of Knoxville urges you to encourage the women in your life to get screened for breast cancer now. Early detection is key and Premier Surgical is at the forefront of the latest diagnosis and treatment of breast cancer. Visit PremierSurgical.com for more information about the surgical treatment of breast cancer. Premier Surgical, expertise you can trust. I just wanted to come by and congratulate you on the great work you've been doing. I like your style. You remind me of a young me. Failure is not an option. That boy is good. Rules remind yourself. Nobody built like you. You design yourself. boy.
It is time for Attaboy, where we highlight positivity. Attaboy is brought to you by Premier Surgical and PremierSurgical.com. Uh, ben, what do you have for Attaboy today, my friend? I am continuing the trend of PU on this show because it seems like all we do is talk about Tennessee punters in the NFL. We gave an Attaboy to Michael Pilardi earlier in the week for his three-year contract extension. And today I'm giving him an attaboy because according to Pro Football Focus, Michael Pilardi has been the best punter in the NFL so far this season. Um, they graded him at a 79.9, and the next highest was J.K. Scott at 73.6. So big ups to Michael Pilardi doing all things well. And then I also want to give a shout out to our very own Brad Matthews, who is getting married tonight. Uh, a really cool, uh, I guess, achievement. Is that, is that, is that the right word? Or really, yeah, find somebody who wants really, to be with here, you forever. Here, here's a better term. Hey. A really cool milestone in, in not only his life, but his soon-to-be bride's wife. Uh, just really happy for Bradley, and I wish him and, and his future, and his soon-to-be wife, Jordy, nothing but the best going forward. Find someone who find someone who wants to be with you forever, through richer or poor sickness and health that is that's an accomplishment um so congratulations to brad uh we appreciate him having a wedding on on a day during football season that doesn't interfere with the uh, football game and i know we sound selfish but you know the rules you don't get married during football season and especially on a saturday but brad made it happen got married drunk going to get married today and uh we won't miss much football so and it's cheaper to get married during football season too so on a friday it's cheaper so uh, congratulations to uh these young people um grant ramey is going to try to join us in hour three uh, to talk about tennessee basketball they had their media day yesterday and so i just want to give uh an attaboy to admiral schofield for to this point, his development. I mean, think about Admiral Schofield when he came into this program. Um, we all are. We come in, we come in immature. We come in young men, uh, young boys looking to grow into men. And Rick Barnes has been the best thing that ever happened to Admiral Schofield. He comes in, uh, Admiral Schofield is kind of clashing a little bit with Rick Barnes as far as buying in and, and really um, buying into the culture. And Admiral was suspended for a little bit, got himself uh, a little bit of trouble, not serious legal trouble, but as far as the Tennessee basketball program, did not meet the expectations of, of Rick Barnes. And then when Admiral came back from his his discipline, he's been, he's been everything you want in a college athlete. Uh, a couple weeks ago against Florida, he narrated a hype video that I thought was sensational. I thought it was amazing. I, I text uh, Barry Rice, and I was like, um, so how am I supposed to top that? <laughs> how, how am I supposed to follow that? That was that was amazing. He was like, don't worry. Yours will be great, too. We recorded mine on a Monday um, there at Daddy and Barbecue's Bar, but Admiral Schofield was, a, was, was amazing. He was amazing. I'm just so proud that he is – He's, 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 he's one of ours. He'll always be connected to Tennessee. He'll always be an ambassador for Tennessee. And enjoy him while you can because he's going to go um, after this year. He's going to do great things. I don't care what he's doing, playing basketball or, or not, he's going to be great. Now, his comments yesterday were amazing. There's no other word for it. He was asked about – being more, kind of being more than an athlete. And here is his his quote. Uh, LeBron James is the standard, the new template for what an athlete must be. I think that LeBron has made it very hard for you to be a quote-unquote dumb athlete. You can't be dumb athlete anymore. There's, a, there's more to this game now than just putting the ball in the basket. There really is. You see LeBron, he owns production companies. He has franchises like um, you know pizza franchises out there. He has a deal with Warner Brothers. He's doing movies. He's doing animated movies. He does all these type of things. He's building schools. He has his own foundation. It's more than just basketball. 
It's about establishing a brand. It's about having a platform and what type of change you can make with that platform. What type of advancements in societies and communities can you make strides in? How can you uh, affect people's lives? I think that's the biggest thing that I'm more than an athlete means. I think LeBron being at the head of the campaign, I mean, I think it's the best thing ever. When I saw that, I jumped right on board. Sometimes, especially in the SEC, you know, it's it's a very successful conference as far as winning. Most times, the athletes over here can be overlooked as far as being, quote, unquote, just athletes. You know, guys that can't articulate, guys that can't do other things. I mean, I understand the video I did was pretty big, and there are certain other things that I do, but, I mean, is it really that shocking? Is it because I'm an athlete and did it? Is it because I'm African-American and did it? Um, what is it? It's just like, what is the standard? That's one of the things I think of, I think that I'm more uh, than an athlete speaks to. It's just saying I can do more than just shoot a ball. I can do more than just run four touchdowns. I can do more than just hitting home runs. I can do more than just make tackles. I can do more than that. I'm an actor. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a politician. I influence kids. I help the homeless. There's just different things, different aspects. I think more than the athlete just brings broader attention to the fact that, you know, this is how you see me. This is all uh, connected. I'm Admiral, Skol I'm Admiral the actor. I'm Admiral the student. I am Admiral the athlete. I'm Admiral the person. It just really speaks to different aspects of athlete's life. That's what I think. Attaboy to Admiral Schofield. One thousand percent correct. He nailed it. He's a hundred percent accurate. And I hope that every single student athlete that comes um, to school, the University of Tennessee or other schools, listen to these words, hear these words. Because you have a chance. You get four years. You get five years, really, to play four. But you get you get five years to make an impact. You get five years to basically change the trajectory of your life. Uh, it's a 40-year decision. And so what do you do when you have all these resources, when you have access to uh, maybe boosters and donors? Do you shake those guys' hands? You never know. It may be a job um, line up for you after you get done playing, just ask Dane Bradshaw. What about the relationships that you create when you're here with teammates and classmates? Are those relationships that may help you, um, you know, in the future doing whatever you want to do outside of, of sports? Um, was it that Admiral was an athlete that we were so amazed by his narration of that hype video? Probably. I mean, that's probably that's probably why because we don't we don't see athletes, current athletes, doing such a great job like he did. I love it. I love it. He knows who he is. He understands the responsibility that he has, and I think it helps him be, become a better basketball player, better friend, better teammate, better leader. Um, this basketball season is going to be fun. I cannot wait. I love this basketball team. I love this program. I love our coach. Um, I can't wait to get him on the show sometime. So, yo, let's make that happen. Let's get Rick Barnes on the show sometimes. Let's make that happen. 865-255-03. Uh, we will take our hour to uh, top of our break here and uh, return after this. love the Swain event and you want more of the show every day you can now get it with Swain event plus Swain event plus features exclusive in-depth interviews with former Vols she saved my life I probably would have never met the tournament man. I looked at him and said uh coach no disrespect I'm going to Tennessee. I'm going to play in the SEC. With Swain Event Plus, you can also get access to the exclusive podcast Real on the Hill with Tennessee media legend John Bryce. What is going on there with that battle? Uh, I had lunch with some folks 
over the course of this past week who indicated some inside the program believe that Jarrett Garantano is really ready to take that next step. So go to SwainEventPlus.com right now to sign up and check out all of the amazing extras that you can get. That's SwainEventPlus.com. Get more. Touchdown or turnover is up next on the Swain Event. Backed by popular demand, shop tax-free at Better Mattress during the month of October. Save hundreds of dollars store-wide. Better Mattress will pay your sales tax on any purchase. My Better Mattress has me sleeping better than ever. And it's handcrafted in East Tennessee, so I know it is made to last by good people who care about the quality of their work. Better Mattress makes it so easy to choose a mattress, you can get started right now. Visit BEDRmattress.com and click on Mattress Prescription. Answer a few questions and they'll send you some options to start with plus at better mattress shoppers sleep worry free if you don't like it after 100 nights they'll swap it out for you and your better mattress will come with a 20-year warranty shop better mattress tax free this month only good night just got better when i made the move to my own studio i was worried about this i was worried about that i was worried about hey did i get this piece of equipment did i get that piece of equipment does that sound good does that not sound good one thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture, because Office Furniture Outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and get this, set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refi that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa Tan Federal Credit Union with their Got That promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. I see, coach. That's right, Johnny. Alcoa Tan will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. Touchdown or Turnover is backed by Alcor 10 Federal Credit Union, a place where you belong. Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Tyreek Hill told reporters Wednesday that he looks forward to the challenge of facing Jacksonville Jaguars corner Jalen Ramsey, right here from Tennessee, uh, who respectfully called a top dog at the cornerback position in the league. Uh, Hill said he's a great player. Obviously, he thinks high of himself. He's all right, I guess. I can't wait to line up against him. I hope he presses me. Ooh. Ooh. Jalen Ramsey, you know, is going to come back with comments. Quote, I just wish he would have picked a side. Either I'm just going to go all right, or I'm the top dog, pick a side. If I'm the top dog... But I'm just all right. That means he doesn't think any other corner in the league is good, and that's not true. And Jalen Ramsey says, I really don't like how whoever made it a matchup of me against Tyreek. I mean, he's good for what he does for their team. He'll make all pro as a return specialist. Let's get that right. As a return specialist his rookie year. He went to two Pro Bowls as a return specialist. Return specialist. In two years, I've made all pro in my position as a corner. I went to the Pro Bowl as a corner. So it's not a wide receiver versus corner matchup. So let's get that out the way off the bat. Woo! Touchdown or turnover that Tyreek Hill either scores a touchdown against Jalen Ramsey or he goes for 100 yards receiving against Jalen Ramsey. Do we see a great battle matchup where Hill gets the best of Ramsey? Hill runs a sub 4, 3, 40. Probably the fastest dude in the league. Jalen Ramsey's a fast guy too. Do we see a touchdown from Hill or 
a 100 yard game from Tyreek Hill, touchdown turnover now, this, this Sunday. Are you saying a 100 yards just in general against the Jaguars or a against Jalen Ramsey, like matched up one on one with Jalen Ramsey? Jalen Ramsey. I'll go turnover. Um, first or one. a touchdown. Touchdown or a hundred yards against Jalen Ramsey. I, I I think Tyreek Hill will get either or. I just don't think it, it will come against Jalen Ramsey. I think Jalen Ramsey, when he makes these comments, for the most part, he makes sure he backs them up in the game. Uh, not only that, but the Chiefs have so many weapons on offense. Kareem Hunt, Tyreek Hill, uh, Travis Kelsey, who I believe Jason Witten said he views him as the best tight end in football right now. Uh, yeah, I I don't think it's an absurd statement. I probably don't agree with it, but I don't think it's an absurd statement to make. But anyways, my point being, Patrick Mahomes has weapon after weapon after weapon after weapon. Sammy Watkins is now on the team. Just that offense is ridiculous. So I don't think Tyreek will get to 100 yards against Jalen Ramsey because of all the weapons. And I, I just – find it hard to believe that after making these comments, Jalen Ramsey is going to allow a touchdown against Tyreek Hill. So I, I'll say turnover. I'm saying touchdown, man. I think Tyreek Hill gets it. I think he gets it done. I think he gets a touchdown. I don't know about 100 yards on Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey is special, but uh, even the special corners give up a touchdown. I think Tyreek Hill, there's just too much um, for the Jacksonville Jaguar defense to have to worry about with other players that Tyreek will have one-on-one -on -one matchups. He'll get opportunity to get behind the defense. I think he will score a touchdown. And Patrick Mahomes can make every single throw on the field. Uh, he could throw 70 yards in the air. So I think Tyreek will get in the end zone. The game is at Kansas City, uh, one of the loudest places to play in the league. And so um, I'm going to say touchdown. Now, do you think that Jalen Ramsey will follow Tyreek Hill wherever he goes? Because – um, I could see Jalen Ramsey lining up against Travis Kelsey. I could see him lining up against Sammy Watkins. And if I remember correctly, Jalen Ramsey usually follows the other team's best receiver. Um, I know with the Patriots, I believe he lines up on Gronk a good portion. Uh, so do you think he lines up on Tyreek Hill the entire game? Or do you think maybe he lines up against Travis Kelsey or Sammy Watkins? I think he will follow Tyreek Hill. Um, and force because Travis Kelsey didn't have the best game last game. I mean, he 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 did not get loose at all. Had a drop, uh, couldn't get going. But uh, other guys stepped up. I think uh, I think Jalen Ramsey would would probably follow Tyreek Hill just to make sure that you contain him and don't let him get loose. Um, taking a look at the text box here. Uh, Ken's not a big LeBron fan. That's that's cool, but you have to understand, Ken, that that guys like Admiral Schofield and, and young athletes, young black athletes, they do look up Le to LeBron because the way he transcended him circumstances. Uh, single mom, grew up in the projects, traveled from home to home to home to home, and LeBron has built an empire. He's never been arrested. He has a beautiful family. He's never you never see him in t TMZ with scandals, things like that. And yes. Uh, I don't like how he plays the game as far as complaining and stuff like that, but I'm not going to let that ruin the fact that um, LeBron James is, a, is, a, is, is an American success story. I mean, um, it's amazing the type of opportunities he's given other people for his vision and his success. I don't like the way every, every, everything he does. I don't like the way he handles every single thing, but I'm sorry I'm not letting one little thing I disagree with uh, not um, – that allow me to see the greatness of LeBron James. He's great, and um, if 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 I had a, a a son, I would want him to to look up to LeBron James too, and and want to be like LeBron James. Don't get in trouble. Does everything uh, for the most part the right way. You don't agree with his views? Cool, whatever. Uh, but you can't say the kid the, the guy doesn't work hard. Kid, he's the same age as me. You can't. Uh, say that he doesn't work hard, that he doesn't put people in great positions to be successful, that he's not a leader, that he's not a champion, um, and does he, he, he cares about people. Because, honestly, LeBron can just take his money, cash his checks, uh, be like Michael Jordan, and not say anything. And that's what Jordan did when he was in LeBron's shoes. He didn't say anything. He didn't stand up for anybody else that was less fortunate than him. He, he did nothing. And so I'm a, I'm a LeBron James fan. Not every single thing that he does I like, but – I like LeBron and what he stands for. And 
don't blame Admiral Schofield one bit for feeling the same way. Uh, LeBron has changed the way athletes think about marketing and branding uh, and being more than just an athlete. So uh, everyone can have their opinion of LeBron. That's fine. Uh, Pat Go Hard Ball says, Ben, don't forget the toilet paper. I'll bring some as well. And if we roll them trees, and we will roll those trees in Auburn oh, we will. next Saturday night. Oh, we will. And I'm do it, Ben. You oh, scared. I will. No, You're I'm scared. not. I uh, you wouldn't do it. I was speaking to my future mother-in-law on the phone, I believe it was yesterday, and we're going to Montgomery on Friday night to stay the night. And I said, well, that's fine with me. The gump. I'm going to need you to stop by a Walmart or a big, a big box store and uh, allow me to grab some toilet paper mm -hmm. so that way I can roll the trees once Tennessee wins. And she was like, you're really going to do that? I said, you gonna I'm, I'm really going to do that. You want to bet? You want to? Put video. I mean, video. Oh, it will. Oh, you can watch me do it live because they have that feed of Tumor's Corner that is uh, always yeah. rolling. Okay. Okay. So you can watch me do it live. If Tennessee wins, you're going to roll Tumor's Corner I, on everything. On everything or everything. Everything. Memphis style. Er, Which, everything. Speaking of Memphis and Penny Hardaway uh, of all nation, we we will be talking about Memphis basketball during for what. Vaughn Nation and Charles. And Charles. Y'all, I love y'all. But this whole Memphis basketball love and Tennessee love, y'all going to have to pick a side. Y'all going to have to pick a side, man. Too much. Y'all doing too much. But, yes, Pat, we will be rolling the trees. And if Tennessee wins, we need to come up with a designated meeting spot, and we will do it together. Okay. And pray that there's no – Harvey Updike of Auburn around anywhere. I hope not, man. Jeff Rowe says, what about recruiting, Swain? <laughs> that never gets old. I miss that sound bite. We need to bring that back. I got it somewhere. I had to put it. Had Wasn't to... it a hot key at one point? Uh, I'm not sure. My uh, my iPad is dead. I got to I gotta plug it back in. I guess I do it during the break. Yeah. That's why I didn't use any hot keys in hour one because – it works better when it's when it's on, so I have to charge the iPad during the break and get the hotkeys back. I don't think the what about recruiting Swain is um, is actually loaded, but it's a great one. It's a great sound. <laughs> it always is, but yeah, uh, the coaches are on the road, man. They'll be on the road going to high school games tonight. Uh, they have crisscrossed the country already. Uh, they'll continue to do so. Um, there's some players from Grayson, Georgia, Grayson High School that Tennessee definitely wants. Um, you still have Wanye Morse, who is a Tennessee commit, but you got Owen Popoe, who's Auburn commit there, and uh, you're still going to try to flip him. Uh, also, uh, they have a corner who is committed to Texas, uh, Kenyatta Watson, and – Still need corners. Still need corners. And maybe you can flip him and use distance as a reason. Texas is a long ways from Atlanta, Georgia, or Grayson, Georgia. So, hey, maybe, maybe you can flip him. Um, you know, <laughs> Peru was in Memphis earlier this week uh, checking in on Bill Norton, Maurice Hampton, and, and Eric Gray. So, um, there's opportunity, man. Early signing period is, what, a month away? A month and some change away? Ooh, I don't it's December. It's is, another is early sign period is de December? Isn't it? I thought it was like the first or second. Yeah, it is. It, isn't it, it the is. week after the December. SEC championship game? It's in game? December. Yeah, so two Which and a half. It should be in November if you ask me. I, I mean, don't think it should because I think that's the busiest time of the year for college football. I mean, I guess so. Thanksgiving that week and I mean, rivalry games and getting ready for the playoffs I mean, and it's, conference it's, championships. It's early, for, it's early for what, six to eight weeks? I mean, it's not really early. And granted, Tennessee, to me. Tennessee will be in a different circumstance this season because Tennessee's goal is to reach a bowl game, and it looks like they're going to have to win three of their last four to make a bowl game. And in the month of November, I don't want Pruitt having to worry about national signing day. I understand that. And I just, I just don't think it is. There's not much distance, much time in between the early signing period and the regular signing period. I don't think it's much. I don't think it's that early, to That's be fair. honest. I mean, we're talking the beginning of February is the normal signing period, but then the early signing period is in yeah, It's in not that December. far ahead. It's just, it's just not enough room in between the, the two dates, if you yeah. ask me. But I would not want to deal with the 
uh, early signing period if I was if I was coaching. What about this will never happen. This is just my thought and something that I would propose if I was the leader of the college football season with coaches getting fired, coaches getting hired, taking different jobs, leaving for the NFL. I don't want a kid to sign in August, think that Jeremy Pruitt is going to be his head football coach, and then two months later Pruitt's either fired or gone to the NFL or taking another job, things of that nature. I don't know about the universal bye week because what are we going to watch during that bye week? What about, what about the fans, Ben? You're just going forget to about, forget about yourself? You're going to forget about the fans? I mean, what are we going to, what are we going to do during, during this universal bye week? We're going to be forced to watch NFL football. Some of us don't want to watch NFL football. Well, Some of us just want to watch college football, Ben. We'll see. That weekend. Did you think about that part? I did, and I've got an answer. That weekend, uh, I'm sure I will experience this over the next couple of years as I enter marriage, but I'm assuming married men have a to-do list. A honey-do list. A honey-do list. And that Saturday of the Universal Bye Week can serve as – the honeydew list day for all the the the, the things that was not accomplished the first couple of weeks of the football season. Mm-mm. Honeydew lists they get done Sunday before one o'clock and after church. And some churches they just run all together because preachers don't know when to sit down and be quiet. But uh, sometimes those honeydew lists they don't they don't get done on Saturday in the middle of. SEC football. So, nice try, Ben. Hey, Cannot a- have a universal bye week. Maybe you just have to keep the the early sign period where it is. And for Tennessee, you want to hold on to as many people as possible uh, while you're losing and you got some good players. You don't want other people coming in and taking your recruits. Um, but Tennessee is definitely trying to uh, sway the uh, committed players towards Knoxville. Hopefully they can be successful with that. I was talking to someone the other day. And I was explaining the whole Trey Knox situation. And someone was like, you know, did you see, did you see, did you, did you, did you see, you know, Trey Knox pick Arkansas over Tennessee? I was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, when you see that a player is picking a school and he has three hats there or three choices, the normal reaction is okay these three schools want this player and he's basically telling two schools no and one school yes in the final three and Tennessee was mentioned in that final three well Tennessee remember during the summer wanted Trey Knox to come to camp and earn the offer they wanted to see him and he did a really good job but he's just not as fast as as they would want a receiver coming in right now and so I don't think he had a committable offer and so the guy was like well why do they offer him if they're not gonna take him I go exactly that's the worst thing about college football recruiting it makes no sense why offer a kid if you know you're not gonna take him makes no sense makes no sense at all but that's that's the case that is the case with college recruiting. It's very, very frustrating, but it, it is what it is right now. And so hopefully we get some flips. Don't yeah. want anybody to flip from us because that means that you don't know what the word commitment means, and we didn't want you anyways, and all this bad stuff about you if you decommit. But if you decommit from another school to come to our school, man, you are the smartest kid in the world. Glad to have you on board. GBO. <laughs> You're, BFL. You're Go a real Vols. BFL. Go Vols. Uh, so, on Wednesday, you added two hotkeys after the show. The yes. land the plane hotkey and then the put it in reverse Terry hotkey. Great Bombino on the text box says that, or ask, can y'all please make Kawhi Leonard's laugh a hotkey? And that is something that needs to happen. Yeah, I thought about that. Um that video, man, it's so funny. I don't think I don't know if the audio just does it justice. I think you need the whole video. Yeah, that's because fair. his face, he's it's so like, awkward. Like he, he just that's the first time I've ever seen him smile, and the whole time he's been in the if, league. If that's what you want to call it, I mean, that was a really awkward smile. That's that would be like Nick Saban and Bill Belichick like laughing. I mean, it was so awkward. It looked like they hurt well, it, because it looked like he had just gotten a shot of Botox. Like in in his face, and he couldn't like everything was just frozen, and he just 
could only do a half smile. And it was it, weird. It wasn't even like a legit smile. It was like a forced. It was awkward. It was really weird. Really weird. A six five two hundred fifty five oh three B drive waterproofing hotline. Now you you mentioned earlier about Admiral Schofield's comment. I have some video that Charlie got from Media Day yesterday that I think would be nice to play with Grant coming up in hour three. Okay, let's do it. Well, the biggest thing is understanding, you know, not just, I mean, I understand my role, but it's understanding how it all fits in the scheme of things. Um, you know, I'm going to play my role regardless, but it's just understanding how it really fits and really um, in certain situations, understanding what we need, uh, just like if we're down a certain amount of points and it's a certain amount of time on the clock, understanding that, you know, maybe even though I have an open shot here, it's maybe better for us to get an open look at the basher or like feed Grant, feed Kyle, or get bone downhill, getting them attacking that point guard, putting fouls on guys. So just really understanding the mental part by understanding situations, understanding uh, time and score, but also understanding our offense completely so that it's never a time where it feels like we're forcing anything or I'm forcing anything offensively or I'm out of sync with the offense or what we're trying to accomplish. You feel like you've grown in that regard in the offseason? I think so, but I mean, in basketball, you can always grow. Uh, you can always grow. And uh, it's just amazing to see that, you know, like Coach Barnes always says, the mental is to the physical, like two is to one. And, for me, uh, understanding that more this offseason, understanding that this season is very important to my growth, but also the growth of the team. Do you think you would have learned that efficiency element if you hadn't gone through the NBA draft process? Um, I, I think I would have learned it eventually, but not as quickly. Uh, I think that going through that process just, I mean, I, I'm very observant. Most times when I'm in a room with people I don't know, I, I'm really quiet because I just I like to observe and, and watch the things that people do. Um, so just, just like even working out with Cavaliers while they were going through the playoffs, just seeing the things that that team was doing, even though you know they had guys coming in for NBA workouts and tryouts, those guys still getting in, taking care of their bodies, getting their shots up, and how they worked. Um, and it, it really amazed me to see like they're not really, you know, getting after it, but they're being very. Everything is very efficient. Everything is um, meticulous. Uh, they're very detailed. Uh, they don't waste energy. Like those are some of the things I, I observe. And you know, you can look at them like, wow, it looks so easy. It looks like they're not going hard, but everything they're doing is is like the T, like perfection. You know, and it's amazing to see that. See that a, a group of men can do that. And um, for me, it was it was it was it was amazing. Even being with the Celtics, you know, talking to Danny Ainge and getting to know Danny Ainge. And, asking some of the things he did back in the day when he was playing and understanding that the game is always evolving, but the process is the same in a sense. You always got to put the time in, always got to put the work in. And, you know, when you're a pro, you can be who you want to be. But in this setting, you have to conform to, you know, what's best for the team. But also at the pro level, you have to do as well. But here it's more so about collectively what's best for not just me, but how can I make Grant better? How can I make Kyle better by just doing my job? And understanding that when I play within my role, doing my job, and that guy's doing his job, that's when success comes. That's when, you know, we have a year like we did last year where everybody understands that each guy plays a, a different part in, in, in the main goal. And when everyone's playing and, and holding their own weight, I mean, it can be it can be even, even more fun. So I think that's the goal. That I, I think that's one of the things I took away, that, you know, it's really got to be this year everyone's pulling their own weight. And it was times last year where that wasn't the case, but I have no doubt in my mind that this year we'll be way more consistent. Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle Chicken Salad, the Chicken Tender Sandwich, or the Kitchen Sink Burrito filled with brisket, pulled pork, and chicken. Not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the Kitchen Sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There's always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. 
we have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost it takes to replace it? Well, you can. Because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike, between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technicians to see how we can get your phone working today. We're here with Dr. Mike Carlson of Tennessee Regenerative Sports Medicine. If you have orthopedic injuries such as shoulder pain, knee pain, or instability, Achilles tendonitis, golfers, or tennis elbow, do what I did and give them a call. Yeah, Jason, we specialize in regenerative non-surgical orthopedics. So we treat damaged ligaments, tendons, and joints, including things like rotator cuff injuries, knee instability, elbow problems, as well as foot problems like plantar fasciitis, Achilles, things of that nature by injecting with stem cells in what's called PRP, or platelet-rich plasma. And this form of treatment we do under ultrasound, so we know we have our target. And it also stimulates the body's own reparative process, and this allows for the healing of damaged tissue. And as you well know, I mean, numerous professional and collegiate athletes, guys like Steph Curry, Tiger Woods, and even yourself with your ankle injury, have been using this form of treatment for years. And so we offer that same type of treatment here in East Tennessee. Visit them on the web at trsportsmedicine.com. Tennessee Regenerative Sports Medicine. East Tennessee's leader in regenerative therapy. Up goes your car insurance. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way, even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not available in all states. If you aren't following the Swain event on Twitter, then are you even on Twitter? Hit that follow button. It's the right thing to do. Today is uh, National Get Funky Day, so I don't know if that means we need to be playing some James Brown up in here, or do we need to poop our pants like the Florida player in the bowl game a couple years ago? I'm not pooping my pants today. <laughs> what What does it mean to get funky? It uh, mean, when I, well, honestly, when you said I need to play some funky music, the first thing that came to mind was Bruno Mars. I'm just being honest. What? Like Uptown, Funk You Up. That song. That's the first song that came to my mind. And some Justin Timberlake. Huh? You got to think of when I grew up. I don't. That's not an excuse anymore. It's not an excuse, Ben. How? It's not an excuse. Look, I'm very aware of James it's Brown. It's not an excuse. That, that would be like saying, in your Western Civ class, sorry. I hated that class. Sorry, because I wasn't born during this time. I should not be – I shouldn't make a good grade. You should just excuse me for, for making an F and just turn my F into an A. There's no reason why I should study this stuff. There's no reason I should know about this stuff because I wasn't born. Who cares about King Tut? It's not a good excuse, Ben. See, this is, fun can't use this is youth funky experience. music. You can't use youth anymore as an excuse. You can't use it. There's Google. There's YouTube. There's Apple Music, there's Spotify. Educate yourself. Well, since I was not born in the 70s, what music would you like for me to play? James Brown, man. Some funk. Okay, I got you. The next break, we got we, we to gotta follow the rules here. Yesterday was National Taco Day. I felt like we didn't follow the rules there because didn't have tacos. And today is National uh, Funky Day, I guess. So, <laughs> Well, Turkey Man did honor Taco Thursday or National Taco Day by 
referring to Taco Bell as the one Spanish word that he knows. Golly, turkey man. 865-255-03, B Dry Waterproofing Hotline. My goodness. That was a thing that happened. Evolve for Life 81 says, so Ben wants to add work to my Saturday and all other men for that matter. Revisit that after you were married for a while. Yeah, I didn't yes. think that part through. I apologize to all the married men out there or the soon-to-be married men. I apologize. Uh, D. Cody says, Swain, they fence riding. Ha ha, Ben. Go Sox. No, no, no. Woo-hoo. Go Yankees. Woo. Uh, Go Vol says, just now being able to listen, and you probably have already talked about this, but what do you think about how Schamberg did not travel with the team to Georgia? Murphy not getting reps because of his inconsistency at practice. I like it. Just wanted to hear your thoughts. I mean, I'm disappointed that, that Schamberg has not been um, involved at this point of the season. season. Excuse me. I'm not disappointed in the coaches. I'm disappointed in Schamberg. You can't tell me physically that he is not one of the top three or four corners on this team. So mentally, he is not doing what he needs to do. How do you allow yourself this season and Pruitt's first year to not be a factor when you have Terry Fair as your coach? Is your position coach. I know Pruitt is, at the end of the day, defense coordinators, corners coach, whatever, but you got a guy in Terry Fair that you can go to who knows what it's like to be a Tennessee football player, that knows the, the daily struggles and the daily um, obstacles, the adversity. You don't go to him and sit down and just 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 pick his brain just as just as a as a young buck trying to get some Knowledge from the old school guy. I mean, put down the fact that he's your coach. I mean, you got an opportunity to 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 get some nuggets, man. To First gather some traffic. rhythm. I just it just doesn't make sense to me. And then you have other guys that you can go to too. I mean, you got Kevin Simon. You got, I mean, you got C.J. Faden. You you got Montero Hardesty. I mean, you got guys who played over there in that building. That if mentally it's not clicking for you or, or or you're having problems getting over the hurdle to get on the field and be consistent, go talk to them. They know what it's like. They've been there too. Is that just not a sign of kind of where Tennessee football is, though? That they we we have a ton of players on this roster that it doesn't appear that they take advantage of the resources that they have at their disposal. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can say that. Um, I mean, these guys are put there f- to be a resource, to be a uh, help. And as a player, you have to use it. You can't feel like – I'm not saying that Schamberger feels this way, but I know other guys have in the past and when I play, is that you can't feel like you can't talk to someone because you're afraid that they're gonna, it's going to get back to the, to the coach. Now, you have to understand something. Over the last couple of years, that was the case. Like every single time someone did something, it got back to Bush Jones. And that can't be the case all the time. There is an emergency situation where you can't hide something from a coach, just like with mommy and daddy and the kids. You know, sometimes the the son or the daughter wants to talk to mom, and there's some times that you just dad don't need to know that one. Not 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 the little stuff. You know, because dad may be upset, whatever, vice versa. You don't want to keep secrets and stuff, but there's just times when you just want to have someone, you just want to have the kids trust, and you want them to be able to talk to you, and don't don't need dad to, to say the same thing mom is saying. You don't need the head coach jumping on you um, when mentally you're having a hurdle. You just want to be able to go talk to someone and not believe that it's going around the complex. You just you really want that. And so there's so many resources around. I mean, when I played, we had, you know, James Mitchell, who's a team chaplain. Now he's a team chaplain with the Tennessee Titans. Um, and maybe that's the that's the reason why they're winning the way they are right now. But you got folks you can talk to. You really do. And honestly, 
CJ Fayton has a has a big old binder or something on his computer with a contact to every former Vol that has ever played football at Tennessee. I'm sure if Sean Schamberger wanted to get a get a hold of Eric Berry, he probably could to 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 get some pointers from him. If he wanted to get a hold from any former Vol, if Marquez Callaway wanted to talk to Jason Swain, it could happen. I don't know why he want to do that, but yeah, you're right. You're right. Schamberger should be playing, and it's not the coach's fault, in my opinion, right now. That's on Schamberger, man, because it's going to get harder for him as more talent gets in here and as the talent that you do have right now that's starting, Bryce Thompson and Elante Taylor, they're only going to get better. Mm -hmm. So a little, little disappointing Schamberger not being um, on the travel squad and not being more of a, a factor this season. And then Murphy, you got to be consistent. You got to get on your playbook. You, you have the skills. I mean, I thought him and Josh Palmer were the two best receivers in fall camp. And we've only seen Josh Palmer. So, I think Murphy is could be a great punt returner. 865-255-03, beat dry waterproofing hotline. Hour two is brought to you by Alumni Hall. Get game day ready with Alumni Hall. A couple locations here in Knoxville. Turkey Creek, Paper Mill, and West Town Mall. Shop online, alumnihall.com. Be right back. You're driving home, flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror. The next thing you know, you're being arrested for DUI. Be responsible, but remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call DUI and criminal defense attorney Marcos Garza. Put this number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300. Because you never know when you or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty, say Garza. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. Gentlemen, when it comes to taking care of your health, sometimes the first step is the hardest. Low T Center is making it easier to take that first step. It all starts with knowing the numbers that are essential to a man. Testosterone levels, blood pressure, cholesterol, prostate, and thyroid. Low T Center makes it quick and easy to get all these levels checked and more. Low T Center specializes in men's health and has expanded their services, including sleep apnea, low thyroid, hypertension, severe allergies, high cholesterol, diabetes, and annual physicals, along with testosterone replacement therapy. The physicians at Low T Center not only want to help you feel good again, they want to help you prevent any serious health problems moving forward. Now, with the holistic approach to your overall health and wellness, Low T Center is making it more convenient for men to take care of their health, and most health insurance is accepted. They'll even verify for you. Take the first step for your health and call 865-392-1388. That's 865-392-1388, or go to LowTCenter.com. Reinventing men's health care. Beatty Chevrolet is celebrating 85 years of low prices. And during Truck Month, choose from over 400 trucks and SUVs, all deeply discounted. Like a new Silverado, now 25% off. A new Equinox, now 20% off. And a certified pre-owned 15 Equinox or Terrain, now $16,995. Plus, buy with confidence with the Beatty Warranty for Life. Big selection and even bigger savings. That's why it's better at Beatty Chevrolet. It's got number 232 savings off MSRB. Blue dog dealer savings and manufacturer incentives with approved credit. Most finance through GMF. Offer expires 831. Big Orange Football is better alongside another Tennessee tradition, Mrs. Grissom's Salad. Mrs. Grissom's ready-made snacks and meals are perfect for game day. Crowd favorites like the select pimento cheese and cranberry pecan chicken salad are delicious and easy to grab and go right from the grocery store. Going to the game? Visit Mrs. Grissom's in Vol Village for the must-have Panini Grill Pimento Cheese Hot Dog. Man, select the best. Select Tennessee's own Mrs. Grissom's. 
You don't have to take an L just because you can't listen to the Swain event live. You can catch up on the podcast posted daily on the app, online, and on iTunes. There we go. There we go. This makes you want to stick your leg out and dance. A little bit, man. Man. So talented. Hour two brought to you by Alumni Hall. Get game day ready here on the Swain event. Uh, 842 on a Friday. Let's get to Turkey Man, who is waiting patiently on the Be Dry Waterproofing Hotline. Turkey Man, good morning. Good morning, individuals. Hope you guys have a great weekend and and everything. And I got a couple football questions before I circle the runway a little bit. Talking about funky music, but uh, uh, my football questions is: is how's uh, Bob Shoots doing? Didn't he go to Mississippi Who? State? Bob Who? Shoots. Who is Bob yeah. Shoots? You know the 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 ice cream truck driver. Oh. They used to be our defensive coordinator. Didn't he go to Mississippi State? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob Shoop. Okay, okay. He, yeah, the ice cream truck driver. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. that guy, yeah. Uh, is, he, is he, I have not watched him really, and I was wondering, is, is he is he uh, blessing his grandma, and has the magic show showed up down there yet? Uh, yeah. Um, I remember that tweet when I said something about Bob Shoop don't care if he, I mean, he would blitz his grandma if he needed to because he talked about his kind of his philosophy, his style of play when he came in as a defense coordinator from Penn State. And remember, a previous defense co- coordinator, excuse me, John Jancic, um, actually wasn't was it that bad, but he didn't blitz as much. And I think that Florida game when Will Greer threw that pass to Callaway and he took it up the sideline uh, to score a touchdown in the last few seconds – we did not blitz the quarterback. And so getting Bob Shoop in here and him saying that he would blitz his grandmother got people really excited in that tweet. So, yes, uh, he's at Mississippi State. Um, I don't know if he is doing great or not. I think the offense is probably the problem there at Mississippi State, not the defense. Uh, Bob Shoop is a good defense coordinator. You don't just forget how to coordinate. Um, I think it was a, kind of the – culture and other things we we pretty much know that but well uh yeah i mean he's he's there at mississippi state turkey man th- they're the 11th ranked defense in the country you know he's, he told us that the, the magic show we're gonna see a magic show and i was wondering if it was actually happening down there but the other other question did you see uh uh nick saban go off on the on the student session the section for yeah Raven? I, I I did Turkey Man, and um, you know I have I have mixed feelings about it. Um, one part of me feels like you know Nick should just calm down a little bit, pump the brakes. I mean these kids, most of them pay out of state tuition; they're already paying a ton of money. And if they want to not use the tickets that they have, is there is there is there right? Um, you know you're scheduling some some you know some Winnie Poos on a you know eleven a.m. kickoff. Those college kids are not getting up early in the morning to go to a football game at 11, 11 o'clock. But at the same time, I do understand what Nick Saban uh, wants. You know, he wants his stadium to be packed all the time. He wants uh, Alabama football to look uh, a certain type of way, and he wants his fans to, to be engaged. I, I get it. If you want to say – if you don't come to the football game, we're going to give your tickets to someone else, then maybe maybe you do that, and maybe they'll use them. But um, at the end of the day, I kind of side with the students a little bit. They are paying the big-time money. It's their tickets. See, I thought that they was leaving early. I, I misunderstood that they weren't coming. Leaving early, not coming, not in the seats. Yeah, yeah. well, that's what I thought that before the game was over, they leaving early. But now I'm going to circle the, the runway a little bit here if, that's, if I can. And uh, 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 talk about funky music. Okay. Uh, my my daughter, she works at one of them coffee places, and uh, so they, there's this musician come in there, and and he uh, he said that he wanted uh, room temperature water, and she explained it that she did not, they did not have bottled water that was just laying out that they had to, 
they had just a filtered water that they used. And his, he said, yeah, I want that. So she, you know, she gave him a cup of water out of the uh, spigot or faucet, however that works. And uh, he, uh, he went this raisin cane. He said, uh, this is not room temperature water. And I want to speak to the manager. And, and, and me being this musician, I've got to have room temperature water because it affects my, my, my singing voice. And she just kind of looked at him and called the manager over and the manager said, well, uh, I'll take care of that. And he went and put three shots of hot water in it. And he said, that's perfect. So that's, that's why, where you get that funky music from. If people like that, it's got to have room temperature water. Huh. Turkey man. All right, I, I landed. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. All right, turkey man. Eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three. B drive waterproof hotline. Oh boy, turkey man. Um. Hmm. Interesting. A six five two hundred fifty five zero three B draw waterproof hotline. Who we got there? Neyland Mafia. Neyland Mafia. Good morning, my friend. Good to hear from you. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, nineteen seventy nine, rural West Tennessee. There's a uh, man lived around the road from us named Erskine Glasscock with his wife Nancy. I swear I'm not making that man's name up. One day he decides to go out and he's cutting a tree down in his backyard. And his wife, along with her sister, are in the house, and they're cutting, they're cooking up a little lunch. And lunch gets ready, and she starts hollering at the back door for Erskine. Well, Swain, the man's busy. He's got chainsaws. He's got axes. He's got, you know, all that kind of stuff. He's working. He doesn't hear her. She hollers again. He doesn't hear her. Finally, she tells her sister, I guess I'll just have to go get him myself. Now, her sister points out the chainsaw is running, and that's probably why he can't hear her. She goes outside anyway. She stomps up to him. I'm going to tell, read him the right act for not listening to her. <laughs> and at that moment, if that tree didn't select that moment to fall directly on top of that woman and drive her into the ground like a tent peg and kill her graveyard dead, I will kiss yours, Charlie, and Ben's ass live on Facebook and give you seven days to promote it. Well, it was just horrible to do. And I'm seven years old, you know, and they have the funeral and everything, and I'm, I'm kind of excited. I get, you know, I get to go. <laughs> and I see Mr. Glasscock standing there all by himself, and I, uh, uh, you know, I know I got to say something. So I'm like, Mr. Glasscock, I sure am sorry for your loss. He takes his glasses off, polishes them with the corner of his shirt, looks down at me, and he says, Son, she was good to me for a long time, but I want you to know this and know it well. If you and somebody ain't got sense enough to get out of the way of a falling tree, you're better off shut up. Now, that stuck with me. And if you take the tree as a metaphor for the inexorable consequence of a stupid action, and Miss Nancy is a Georgia baseball player, mm-hmm. and Erskine is a Georgia athletic director. Mm-hmm. The man's metaphor remains the same. If someone is that stupid, if someone cannot see the consequences of a stupid action, you're just better off shut up. They got to go. They got to get away. You know, they they've got, they can't be around you. No matter what has happened in the past, it's time for them to go. Now, Ben, I understand that you're, you're about to get married. Now, I'm not saying that you need to carry your young fiance out in the woods and start cutting down a tree and see what happens. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting that. But if you were at the Swain event Christmas party and suddenly the Christmas tree all of a sudden fell in one direction, just so you could see what would happen, Swain wouldn't even get mad at you. He would understand. He would know what you were doing. <clears throat> so, gentlemen, that's, that's what I've got to say today. If hey. people, no matter what they've done for you, are too stupid to see the consequence of a horrible action, then you're better off rid of them. Hey, man. Hey, 
Well said, my friend. As always, Neela Mafia, um, you know, that player, Georgia, I thought Georgia did the right thing, uh, dismissing him from the team. You'd still allow him to go to school. If I'm him, I'll be a little embarrassed to go to class, to be honest, um, with that happening. And I'm sorry, alcohol is not a excuse. Stop using alcohol as an excuse out here in these streets. Uh, if you're old enough to drink it, then you should be old enough to – uh, accept your consequences when you do something stupid. So don't drink it if you cannot be accountable for your actions. <laughs> so um, I hate alcohol being used. Oh, you know, you know, he said this. He was drunk. Who cares, man? Who cares? Who cares? Don't drink if you can't handle your liquor. If you can't remember what you said. So uh, I'm with you. I'm with you, Neil Mafia, and uh, I really appreciate the phone call and you dropping story time on us as always. Uh, Turkey man can learn uh, a thing or two from you, or. In reverse, maybe you can learn something from Turkey Man. I can always learn from Turkey Man. <laughs> have, have a great weekend, man. Have a great Yuppie. weekend. So what I got out of that phone call is that you need to host a Swain event Christmas party. And at a particular time, I need to send the Christmas tree flying and see if my fiance gets out of the way or not. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. So I heard too. Yeah, let's do I th- it. I think we sh- we can test it on Mrs. Swain as well. Mm. We can test it on uh, Miss Burris as well. Mrs. Burris. Mrs. Excuse me. Yeah. Mrs. Burris as well, and then Mrs. Matthews uh, at the time. So I don't think that's a good idea, man. I don't think that's a good idea. We can uh, we can go one by one. Nah. See, see how each. I, I already know how that's going to end up. Well, I know mm. how yours will end up too. She would catch it and put it back. Yeah, because she she she's the real OG. Yeah, no, nah, that's that that would not be happening in in the Swain household. But thanks thanks for the phone call, Neil and Mafia. Um, I thought Georgia did the right thing. Not going to go over it like we did yesterday, to be honest. But they did the right thing. And um, if you are someone that says, okay, maybe the punishment is is a little harsh because of how people are labeled as racist and how. Racism is kind of thrown around a lot more these days. I do understand that because it is used way too much uh, today than ever before. But we are seeing it kind of blatantly uh, more, it seems like, now than, than, than we have in a long time. Uh, and I said a long time, not ever, because we know what happened um, there in the 60s and the 70s and, and before that. But um, – this is a case where you dismiss him from the team. It's not a, oh, was the punishment too much? No, it wasn't too much. You can't be a student athlete. You can't be, you can't be racist and play sports. It just it doesn't work. There's people from different uh, cultures that all play sports, and it's hard to, to do that if you have someone that, that, that thinks lower of you just because of something you can't control. You're born, you can't control how you look. The only thing you can control is how you treat people and the person that you are and how hard you work and how nice you are. And those are things you can control. And that's how I choose to judge people, not on things that they can't control. Uh, Carmen says, did they teach about King Tut and Western Civ? I don't know, man. I just made it up. I hated Western Civ. I know that much. Yeah, because I I, that theory that you laid out. Oh, I wasn't around at this point. Why do I need to learn all this? No. That was, that was the mindset I had with some of that stuff. And granted, I outside of journalism, my other profession that I wanted to do was I wanted to be a history teacher and I wanted to coach baseball. But the history that I wanted to teach was American history. I love learning about the Revolutionary War and World War Two and all those type of things. But when it comes to learning about King Tut in eight fifty, no, thank you. I could see you being. As a substitute teacher or a history teacher, but back in Buckhorn High School, Fear the deer. wearing the same outfit that Jeremy Pruitt wore during his coaching show last, the um, blazer, the brown blazer, which I think was a pretty nice getup. Some guys just can't pull it off. I mean, you put that on some maybe some other folks, they look better or they look worse, but the actual outfit itself not that bad. If you if you if you if you if you, if you if you're being honest. But I can see you wearing something like that. Well, it's funny you bring that up because we had an agricultural class, and our ag teacher had a jacket just like that at good old Buckhorn High School. He he would wear it just about every Friday. Yeah. Uh, just Grills says, what are your thoughts on team leaders? It seems Vols haven't had any recognizable leaders for many years on offense or defense. Years past, you knew without a doubt who they were. 
Why is that not the way now? Well, I, we just don't have you don't have the the personalities. I think um, I think Chad Tuttle is is I mean, his first his nickname or first name is Shy. So there there it is right there. Um, he's just not vocal. Kyle Phillips is not vocal. He is an introvert. Um, I mean, you have Jawan, but Jawan is kind of you know he's double dutching and in, in when to jump in and when not to jump in. You know, he wants to make sure he's doing everything right under this new staff. He was reinstated just a few months ago. And so I don't know if he's able to really be himself. Um, I mean, so you have that. You have, you know, Garantano, who just was named the starter not too long ago. And, and we're seeing more and more of, of, of him being vocal. You got Trey Smith, who was out for a lot of the time. And so it's hard to lead when you're hurt. That's why I get so much love and respect to a guy like Kurt Majit because that guy led when he was in the game and when he was out of the game, when he was healthy, when he was injured. And it's hard to do. It's hard to lead when you're hurt. And so we've had, we got a lot of guys that just personality, they don't have it. They don't, they don't have the German banks outgoing personality vocal. They, they don't have it. And I think that's why you're not seeing the leadership that we need. And you need more than just two or three. You need to have a, a good number of leaders, guys who are vocal, guys who are uh, more of a example by their actions. But you got to have leaders on your football team, and we just don't have enough. I, and I think you said it perfectly just a second ago that you need a good number of leaders, not just one or two, because even Al Wilson was the unquestioned head leader, head chief of the 1998 National Championship team, but you had guys like Deion Grant and Fred White and Billy Ratliff, um, Raynock Thompson's of the world, that they did everything the right way on the football field in, in terms of leading. So you've had your Kurt Majit, but you haven't had anybody step up next to Kurt Majit. Gotta have it, man. Gotta have it. And you can develop those leaders, too. You can, you can, you can develop leadership. You really can. Uh, but you recruit it, too. Swain event, hour three, coming up around the corner. Stay with us. Be right back. What is coming up on the Swain event? Today will be mostly sunny with a high of 88 and a low around 67. Tomorrow there is a 20% chance of showers, mostly sunny with a high of 87 and a low of 67. Sunday, another 20% chance of rain, mostly sunny skies, and a high in the upper 80s. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by Be Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Be Dry can help. BeDry.com Do you have cracks in your foundation? a wet basement, or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give B-Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, B-Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. B-Dry only uses high-quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A-plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words. Better call B-Dry. Reach out to B-Dry today at 865-662-5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865-662-5238. Remember, better call Be Dry. Do you want a custom thing tumbler or bottle to show off your team spirit every day of the week? Well, look no further than Game Time Sidekicks. Every design has you, the fan, in mind. Their tumblers and bottles are double-walled, vacuum-insulated stainless steel, and their quality is second to none in the market. From stainless steel sippy cups to tumblers and sports bottles, Game Time Sidekicks offers something for the fan of all ages to rep their team with. 
They have many different logo options, so fans will have something they are proud to carry around all the time. Use promo code SWAIN at checkout to get 20% off of your entire purchase at GameTimeSidekicks.com. They also offer $5 flat rate shipping. Be sure to check out the Game Time Workshop on the website and customize your Tumblr to make it one of a kind with things like your nickname, number, or initials. Game Time Sidekicks. Show your colors and carry your team. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can, because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, Isipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technicians to see how we can get your phone working today. Dan Mullen posing awkwardly with recruits. For what? Gators working out wearing costumes. For what? Vanderbilt. Making a sorority style video. For what? Aaron Murray and David Pollock opening their mouths. For what? All right, sign for For What here on the show where we highlight people being stupid. People making questionable decisions out here in the world and being... Where are we going today? I'm going to Memphis, Tennessee. A place where I actually respect, unlike some of the folks in the greater Nashville area, because I have family outside of Memphis, Tennessee, and I'm a big Grizzlies fan. But last night, Memphis hosted uh, Midnight Madness, the Memphis Tigers basketball team that is inside FedEx Forum, and there were 18,000 people. It was a wild crowd. They had Yo Gotti in attendance, Moneybag Yo in attendance, Block Boy JB in Ooh. attendance, and I I understand that Yo Gotti's probably the only name out of those three that people recognize. But Moneybag Yo and Block Boy JB are up and coming rappers in the city of Memphis, and I do not listen to their music. Um, Block Boy JB is the he sings the song Shoot that Shoot song. Anyways, um, re- re- regardless. Memphis fans were excited about having their rappers in the building, but earlier that week, uh, there were two local reporters, um, Jason Smith and Jason Martin, as I believe the other guy's name, they do the 2 p.m. radio show in Memphis, I believe, on 92.9 FM, and they promised that Justin Timberlake and Drake were going to be in attendance, Uh, and so, because they stated that Justin Timberlake and Drake were going to be in attendance. A bunch of fans went out and bought a $150 ticket, $200 tickets to go to the event because they thought Justin Timberlake and Drake were going to be there. And Justin Timberlake and Drake did not show last night. So um, going off Gary Parrish's Twitter account from last night, a lot of the Memphis fans, after introducing Penny Hardaway as the head coach uh, for the first time in person, seeing the basketball team in a three-point contest, a dunk contest, do a little practice drills. They were all excited about the basketball team, but then they were disappointed leaving the building because Justin Timberlake and Drake did not show up. So it was just a, kind of like a funny situation, and I, I give it just the whole situation for what because I think it's really funny. Remember that one year, Orange or White oh, game, yeah. when folks thought that Peyton Manning was going to be – uh, a part of the day and he wasn't no one from Tennessee he said that he was going to be a part of the day I think just people just started to suspect that and then the rumor started to kind of generate some steam and then people really were ex- was expecting Peyton Manning to be a part of that Orange White weekend but he wasn't he wasn't even in town um my goodness this is a um this is a bad look I, I guess what really gets the for what in this situation is that the university did not come out and kind of squash these rumors uh even penny said that i knew that they were not coming i tried to get justin timberlake i did not even try to get drake to come and so like the university knew that they were not coming 
but they didn't squash the rumors so that they could sell a couple extra tickets. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah, Roy on the Facebook Live comment says, I'm ready to see a change in our quarterback position, Swain. JG is 5-9 and nine as our starting quarterback and is still listed as a dual threat quarterback. I haven't seen him as any kind of threat yet. Where is JG's dual threat ability at? Um, JG's been the same player out of high school. I mean, he's had the same type of skill set. Uh, obviously, he's better than he is now than out of high school, but the scout report has been just pretty much the same. Uh, he can make all the throws. He has a big arm, and he is mobile. But who? there's only one place that tells you that a quarterback is dual threat, and that's recruiting sites. So you let recruiting sites tell you that Jared is some type of dual threat quarterback making you think that he's going to be Braxton Miller or Josh Dobbs or or, or uh, Dak Prescott or Cam Newton, and he's not that. So I think your expectations of Jared is a little unfair because of some recruiting site. He can run a little bit, but he's a pass-first quarterback. And um, I'm sorry, but that's always what he's been. He's, he's not Josh Dobbs. Um, as far as ready to see a change, hey, who you want to see? Do you want to see the freshman J.T. Strout? You want to see him go in there and 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 manage this tough part of the schedule as a true freshman with not a lot of talent around him and a lot of experience? Do you want that to happen, or do you want to go with Kayla Chris, who does not um, scare any defenses with his ability to go deep? I mean, who do you want to see in there? I mean, you want to make a change, but okay, what change do you want to make? Um, the the five and nine record as a quarterback, yeah, it doesn't look good, but do we know what happened during those fourteen games and what was going on during those fourteen games? Jer started um, last year against South Carolina when the season was pretty much done. You had already laid down to Georgia. You already pooped the bed against UMass, even though you won. Butch was pretty much fired at I that mean, point. I'm sorry, just Jared is the best quarterback that we have. And he is better than what people are giving him, um, well, not giving him credit for. They're failing to look at everything else that's going on. They're failing to look. Like I, I heard somebody say uh, on Jared's fumble interception, first turnover against, against Florida, blaming Jared for the protection. And I'm like, well, the running back blocked the guy that was already being blocked by the tight end. So how is that on Jared? How is the running back bouncing the ball on Jared? How is all the things that people kind of point to that is not happening on offense, is it really Jared's fault? And I don't know if it is. We did the same thing with Josh Dobbs. Oh, you know, Josh Dobbs, he doesn't make reads. And, you know, I bet he's not allowed to. Or, man, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't read the field properly. And, uh, da, 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 and I mean, it's because the quarterback is always the easy scapegoat because he is the focal point of the offense. He has the ball in his hand on every single play. I just haven't heard any criticism where it matters on, on Jared Games, and that is from the complex. I just I haven't I haven't I, heard any. And even like Friday, I believe, or not Friday, last Saturday against Georgia, I believe Jared finished thirteen of twenty one. Uh, a lot of those were passes he had to get rid of fairly quickly. Balls that hit the hand of Dominic Wood Anderson, and he wasn't able to reel in. There now there was one. It was the the play the play right before the swing pass touchdown to Ty Chandler, to where they kind of faked the sweep to the right, and then he had Brandon Johnson going down the seam. And if he would have looked up, he had Brandon Johnson for a touchdown. That that was the one. That was the big critique for me in the Georgia game that he missed Brandon Johnson going down the seam after he had fumbled kind of the snap there for a second, didn't really get the sweep to the right, and then he had an opportunity to go to hit Brandon Johnson going down the seam, and Jeremy, you could see Jeremy Pruitt on the sideline, get rid of it, get rid of it. And all the coaches on the sideline saw Brandon Johnson running down the seam open, and he did miss him. But other than that, I mean, his completion percentage is in the 60s, I believe, which isn't bad. But it should be better than what it is because Jared has 
really given his receivers opportunities to make plays. There have there have been maybe two, three, four throws all season where Jarrett really missed that throw. It, very rarely do you see him just completely miss a receiver. And I don't know if Jarrett is is five and nine because uh, I got a text message that says that he's only started eleven games so far. So uh, that math don't work right there. If he's five and nine I, starter. I think he's two and nine. Yeah, so because he had not won a, he did not win a game last year as a starter, and he's won two games this year as yeah, a starter. So I don't know if the quarterback. If that even matters, who the quarterback would be. I mean, this there's so many deficiencies that you have to kind of cover up and deal with. And the quarterback change, I'm sorry, it's just not the answer right now. There's so many other problems with this offense. It's just not number two. I mean, there's about four or five other things we can point to before you go look at Jared. Before you look at Jared, there's other things we can point to and try to fix and correct. I just don't understand why we're still on this. It, it, it doesn't make sense. All right, let's go to the phones. Let's get to Jay. Swain. Jay, good morning. Hey, man. Look, I agree with everything you just said. Um, Jared, Jared's had it tough, and, and he's a tough kid, and I like him. And You're right. There's a lot of other things that need to get fixed that would make Jared look better. Um, but with that being said, do you think that we see JT Shroud this season? Um, after, maybe after we get out of this tough stretch where, you know, I don't know if we're even going to be in a position where we can put a backup quarterback in. So I don't even know if that's going to happen, honestly, because, uh, I don't know who we're just going to beat down, maybe Charlotte, but, um, maybe that's about it. But that's what I'm wondering because, my, my gut tells me that for whatever reason, whether it's uh, the kid at Alabama, uh, Jalen Hurts, maybe he transfers and proves and get him here, or it's J.T. Shrout, who most people say he's got clearly the best arm talent on the team. I, there's just a feeling with me that J.G. is just not going to be our starter next year. I think he's going to get his spot taken by somebody. Oh, that's, that's fair. That's fair to, to – uh forecast that maybe. Uh, I think there's going to be another quarterback battle in the spring. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Um, right. you're, gonna, you're gonna have maybe a addition coming in a quarterback. I don't know that, but you, you see some options out there that that looks to be um, maybe enticing if you're Tennessee, but you got JT Strout who Tyson held liked a lot. You know, they recruited him a little bit, looked at him when he was at uh, USC. But what if Tyson Hill's not here next year? What if, you know, he's not the answer to OC? Do they still have the same feelings about JT Stroud? That's something you also got to think about, too. Uh, mm-hmm. No, Helton really likes Stroud. Does Pruitt really like Stroud? From everything that I've heard, he does. He likes his arm. Uh, Jared has a good arm, too, but Stroud has a dang good arm as well. And then. What are you going to do um, beyond Jarrett and beyond J.T. Stroud? I mean, Will McBride is not going to be a guy that 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 you're going to play. I don't think Pruitt is, is a big fan of of, of um, McBride. And then it's going to be – I'm not sure when Brian Maurer gets here. Um, I'm not sure if he's early enrollee or, or not. I'm not sure. But you're looking at next season with – Red shirt uh, freshman J.T. Stroud, uh, red shirt junior and Jerry Guantano, uh, and then you are looking at true freshman Brian Maurer uh, as your three quarterbacks. He is an mm. early enrollee. So early enrollee. So he'll be here during the spring. So you'll have you. I think you'll have a battle during the spring. I do. I agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I think so too. I think he definitely have a battle on his hands. And um, but to his to his fairness. He's a tough kid. He, he continually gets his brain beat in. And uh, it's like you said, there's a lot of issues around that we need to fix that have nothing to do with Jared Garantano. And uh, I, so I, I think fans need to cut him a little bit of slack. And, um, you know, we'll see. And I don't think Tyson Helton has done him any favors with his play calling. Um, Correct. So th- there, there's a lot of things around. The, the guy has the talent. He's got a good arm, and, uh, you know, he's a better fit for this offense 
or a pro style offense than what Butch was running. So, but uh, it, it's going to be interesting. But hopefully, you know, maybe at least the Charlotte game we can um, put some points on the board and maybe see you know JT Stroud for at least a few series. I'd like to see that. I don't know about y'all. Maybe, maybe Jay. And, and thanks for the phone call. There was. Um announcement basically that JT Stroud was going to to redshirt this season but with the new redshirt rule does that mean he plays in four less games and still redshirt um I do not know that that answer there I don't know the game plan 865-255-03 uh if Jerry had the talent that some of the quarterbacks had in mid-2000s around them it wouldn't be it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a problem it wouldn't be a problem like it is with some fans that want to see a different quarterback in there, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, hour three continues. We'll talk to Grant Ramey at the bottom of the hour, uh, but for now, uh, we will come back to the text box and take a look at Facebook Live comments. Be right back. love the Swain event and you want more of the show every day, you can now get it with Swain Event Plus. Swain Event Plus features exclusive, in-depth interviews with former Vols. She saved my life. I probably would have never made the tournament, man. I looked at him and said, uh, Coach, no disrespect. I'm going to Tennessee. I'm going to play in the SEC. With Swain Event Plus, you can also get access to the exclusive podcast Real on the Hill with Tennessee media legend John Bryce. What is going on there with that battle? Uh, I had lunch with some folks over the course of this past week who indicated some inside the program believe that Jarrett Garantano is really ready to take that next step. So go to SwainEventPlus.com right now to sign up and check out all of the amazing extras that you can get. That's SwainEventPlus.com. Get more. Hour 3 of the Swain Event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. Premier Surgical Associates is pleased to welcome Dr. Randy Reiser to its surgical practice. Dr. Reiser is board certified in general and vascular surgery and has treated patients in the Knox and Blount County areas for more than 20 years. Dr. Reiser is seeing patients at Premier Surgical's offices at Turkey Creek Medical Center, Paper Mill Drive, and in Maryville. For more information or to request an appointment with Dr. Reiser, please visit premiersurgical.com right now. VFL's Jason Swain and Ty Kelly here with our Men on Football and Smoothie segment. Let's discuss some of our favorite smoothies and how they impact our lives. TK, man, tell me which smoothie comes to mind when you think about playing defense. Swain O, the Peanut Butter Power Plus and the Power Punch Plus provide the energy needed to make plays every time they take the field. Then you have the Gladiator and the Hulk, nutrition every dominant player has to have. Bottom line, everyone wants to be a dominant player. Now, Swain, you tell me about the offensive side of the ball. TK, it's simple. You always score with Smoothie King. The shredder personifies what we are going to do to opposing defenses. The berry punch and activator will light up the scoreboard. And in case we need to go into overtime, the pure recharge will put us over the top for the win. Swain, oh, you know I love football and Smoothie King. I'm a VFL, a Smoothie King for life. The chocolate gladiator and the chocolate shredder with the scoop of peanut butter. Oh, that's my go-to smoothie. They get a chest bump all day. Yes, sir. This concludes our Men on Football and Smoothie King segment for today. Don't forget the Sip by Sip program. Use Smoothie King as a meal replacement five or more times a week, and you will feel and see the difference. Smoothie King, the healthy alternative to fast food. Delicious and nutritious. TK. Don't forget the peanut butter. Yeah, boy. All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refine that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa 10 Federal Credit Union with their Got That promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. Are you serious, coach? That's right, Johnny. Alcoa 10 will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa 10. Alcoa 10. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. For a replay of each day's Swain Event TV, like us on Facebook. 
I'm not guessing she counts as a song. Funky in my book. Uh, I, 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 I guess, I guess. We go, we go, we go Michael Jackson. Jackson. Uh, Funky, a little bit there. 865, 255, 8588. We'll talk to Grant Rainey at the bottom of the hour, 930, to get his take on Tennessee basketball media day. A lot of excitement surrounding the basketball team. Rick Barnes coming off his coach of the year. And South the SEC here, um, you have Grant Williams coming off his SEC Player of the Year, and then uh, Lamonte Turner, six-man six Player of the Year last year. Uh, this, this team, high, high, high expectations. I think that narrative of Rick Barnes not being able to recruit, I think that has died as Tennessee has been able to bring in D.J. Burns, who's a Four-star highlight player, player from South Carolina, Carolina uh, who was who was eligible, was ready to go, and uh, was there at many days. And you will not get yourself a another five-star, uh, will get yourself a five-star guard uh, committed. And so uh, Rick Barnes has, has destroyed that there that they can't recruit. Um, this team is as close as any team I've seen ever in college sports. This, this team, team, this basketball, basketball team, team. Uh, they're, they're very close, uh, they're very unselfish, and, and Rick Barnes, I like him owning, basically owning it now. If this team gets complacent, that's on him, that's on me. That's, that's, this is what he said. It is on him. Because he has to find new ways to challenge the team, to make the team Stay hungry, hungry not, not read the press clippings, because the press clippings are not going to win basketball games. games. It's, it's how you take, take care of the basketball. basketball. It's, it's how, how you play. It's the fundamentals, rebound, block, and turnovers, free, free throws. throws. All, all, all these things, things that got you to this point to be a, a top five, top ten preseason ranked team. You have to continue to do those. You have a target on your chest. You have a target on your back now. And so you get everyone's best shot. Because, because everyone picks, picks you to win the league. league. Everyone picks you to possibly get to the Final Four or the Elite Eight. So, uh, love the basketball, basketball team. We'll talk to Grant at the bottom of the hour about this team. Sometimes you get lucky. And Tennessee got lucky being able to hire Rick Barnes. Uh, with Texas Society, he wasn't good enough. Tennessee, Tennessee looking for a basketball coach. I think, I think the, the good news for Rick Barnes is that when the – Preseason SEC polls come out or the the predicted order of finish um, voted on by the media. He's going to have ammunition because I believe Kentucky will be picked to win the league despite Tennessee returning 90% of its scoring. And they may even be picked behind Auburn. I, I can see Tennessee being picked to finish third in the league. Uh, Auburn returns almost everybody. Uh, I know they lost uh, – they lost one of the guards, I forget the guy's name. Mustafa Hammer, he transferred to Connecticut, I believe. But they, they all returned to Jerry Harper. They get Austin Wiley back, who was could have gone in the NBA draft. He could have been a first-round pick. He sat out last year because of the NCAA investigation. But some people may view Auburn as a better team. You know the national media are always going to view Kentucky as a better team. And Kentucky, Kentucky returns Quade Green at point guard, P.J. Washington. Uh, power forward, and then they added the grad transfer of Reed Travis from Stanford, who was a very good basketball player. So I think that's, I hope Tennessee is picked third behind Auburn in Kentucky because then Rick Barnes can use that as an example. Like, okay, we return all these players. We're supposed to be really, really good this season, and people are still doubting whether we can win the league or not. And what do we have to do to uh, create some, some, some – some some new motivation. Motivation. Right. That's, That's what, what Nick Saban does, and yeah. it has worked That's year weird. after yeah. year after year. And we highlighted Adam Schofield earlier in the show for his comments. I, I think what's cool is that, yes, Adam was the bona fide leader of that basketball team, the face of the basketball team, in my opinion. But there are other guys on that team that could step up in Adam's place. Um, very easily, in my opinion, Lamonte Turner, but especially Grant Williams. I think Grant's leadership and how his teammates feel about him are overlooked a lot. And, Grant Raymond tweeted this out 40 minutes ago that two years ago, I stood outside his school, Grant Raymond's school in Charlotte, and told me, and Grant told me all about his the success that Tennessee was going to have. 
Uh, and Grant specifically said, we're not coming in just to be that foundation. We're coming to start something and create something that's going to last forever. We don't want to just come in and be the start of it, the start of something new. We, we want to be that huge burst that comes to Tennessee. I think we're national championship contenders in a few years. And what do you know? Those few years have gone by. Tennessee is a legitimate national championship contender. I think, I think sometimes, sometimes when you are looked upon to be the leader, you, you, you think, think that just talking, just talking, 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 talking motivating guys verbally is the way to do it. And I remember when Rick Barnes told Grant that he just needs to just do a lot of it. Uh, because, you know, needed a leader, young team. So he, he, he felt like that is what leadership was. was. And leadership is a part of that. Is how you verbally communicate with your guys, but you gotta go do it too. And one thing that Rick Warren said that Grant needs to take that next step uh, in this game is his condition, being able to play longer minutes um, and not pick up silly fouls because he's tired. And so that's the part of his game I want to see. We've seen his game evolve, him being able to step out and make that outside shot, uh, him being able to be. A back to the basket player in the post and be able to face you up, make that shot, and go around you uh, to the left or to the right and finish with the left or the right. Now it's time to see Grant's game move forward a little bit and be in great conditioning, uh, be able to go full speed, not have those mental lapses because you're tired. That's the first thing to go when you're tired. That's, it's, your, it's your mind. Most mistakes are made. College sports or sports in general is when you are tired. So uh, part of LeBron James' game that has evolved is his, his nutrition and his conditioning. I mean, he lost some weight, and the dude goes full speed all the time, which is another reason why Russell Westbrook is so impressive and so remarkable because he goes one speed, that is full speed, and he goes the entire time in the game. He doesn't tire. Grant Williams and this, these guys – they, they got to be in better shape than they were last year. So that way like, um, they, they can limit, limit those mental mistakes and be on the court longer. So uh, we'll, we'll talk to Grant here shortly. Got about a few minutes left, two, two or so minutes left in the segment before we do get Grant on. But David Carr, former number one overall pick, shared a story when he was at Fresno State uh, about Lane Kiffin. Kiffin. Lane, Lane Kiffin, Kiffin was a fifth-year senior. And David Carr was a freshman. David Carr says Lane was a fifth year guy that didn't want to give up his job to a freshman. And then he started taking reps in practice. Uh, so David Carr was taking reps for Lane Kiffin in practice. And his last day as a Bulldog was when he came out. We were supposed to be in full pads. And then he came out in shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, Fresno State offensive coordinator Jeff Tefford says, Lane, what are you doing? And he, he says, says, well, I figured I could come out here in shorts and a t-shirt because you're just going to give all my reps to Dave. And Tefford sends him in, says, get off my field. Lane leaves practice. And David Carr's like, well, did he? I guess, I guess Lane quit. Okay, well, all right. Monty Kiffin is Lane's dad. Monty, coach at Tampa Bay, defense coordinator at the time. Uh, Monty's not having this, right? 30 minutes goes by. Lane comes back out without his helmet. Short and T-shirt, and now he is the wide receiver assistant coach, and that is how his career began, according to David David Carr. So he went from a player to a coach um, in one practice. Hey man, David Monty Kiffin make things happen, right? The lane train, the lane train. That's how the lane train got started, man. He says, since, since you're going to give my rep to someone else, else come out here shorts and t-shirts. That sounds like Lane Lane responded on the tweet and said that it wasn't, it wasn't a t-shirt. It wasn't a t-shirt. Wasn't a t-shirt. So, so maybe it was something else. else. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was shirtless. Maybe he thought he said it wasn't shorts. Maybe it was something else. But funny story there from uh, David Carr on Lane Kiffin. We will take a quick time out, and when we return, we will be joined by Grant Rainey, Go Ball 24 7, covers basketball. And uh, this basketball team deserves some conversation. And we're going to give it to you coming up next. Hello. Our three of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and lowtcenter.com. 
Do you okay. know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. Top 100 barbecue restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different I got about, I got meal four, every day. I got about four Chipotle minutes. Chicken three, salad, three minutes or so. The chicken tender sandwich uh, with work, a kitchen sink burrito. I sent the package yesterday. Pork, uh, I got your email. Chicken, not to mention uh, queso, label, jalapenos, and more. It's called the kitchen sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at yes, Dead End Barbecue. Located off yes. of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. Label, the summer uh, flavor search uh, is over. Email, I printed it. You're uh, driving home, yesterday. flashing so. blue lights in your rearview mirror. You pull over, step out of your car, and the next thing you know, you're being arrested for driving under the influence. Now, what do you do? We all should be responsible. But remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza at 865-540-8300. The investigative teams at the Garza Law Firm know the justice system inside and out. They utilize cutting-edge technologies and investigative methods to prepare your specific case. Before you plead guilty to any criminal charges, call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza. Put his number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300, because you never know when you or or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty. Say Garza. 865-540-8300. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. Back by popular demand, shop tax-free at Better Mattress during the month of October. Save hundreds of dollars store-wide. Better Mattress will pay your sales tax on any purchase. My Better Mattress has me sleeping better than ever. And it's handcrafted in East Tennessee, so I know it is made to last by good people who care about the quality of their work. Yeah, better right Mattress now. makes it so easy to choose a mattress, you can get started right now. Visit BEDRmattress.com and click on Mattress Prescription. Answer a few questions questions and they'll send you some options to start with plus at better mattress shoppers sleep worry free if you don't like it after 100 nights they'll swap it out for you and your better mattress will come with a 20-year warranty shop better mattress tax-free this month only good night just got better we have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones see but did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can, because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our hey, West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardin's or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technician to see how we can get your phone working today. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not available in all states. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. At work, can't call in? Don't feel bad. You can talk to the guys in the text box. It's part of the free Swain event app. Eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three is the big drive offer for the hotline, and the only hotline is Go Ball twenty four seven on Grant Ramey at Grant Ramey on Twitter. 
Uh, my uh, bear, bear fan, fan brother. brother. Good, Good morning, morning, Grant. Grant. Um, this bye week is killing me after last Sunday. Oh, the Bears bye week, not Tennessee's bye week. Yeah, yeah man. man. I'm, I'm okay, okay with, with the Bears bye week. week. Hey, you, you, can't, can't, you can't lose games game that, that you don't play. play. And allow everybody else to lose in, you know, in, the, in the division. A lot of the Vikings can continue to stink. Uh, a lot of the Packers may lose a game. And the, and the, um, goodness gracious, the Lions lose a game. And then you can build at least a little bit more in the NFC uh, North. So I'm happy, man. I'm cool. Let's, let's take a little break. Regroup. Mitchell Trubisky, Trubisky had a uh, unbelievable performance against Tampa Bay. Let's follow up with another one. Uh, next, next week, week. So, so my bear, bear fan brother Grant, Grant is on with us this morning. Uh, you, you were there, there man, yesterday at uh, Mini Days, Days for Tennessee, Tennessee basketball. basketball. Uh, a, a lot, lot of excitement. Do these guys understand, understand the expectations? expectations? Like, like I, 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 I get, get they see like the number next, next to their name, name but do they, they truly understand and grasp that people may expect these guys to be in the final four or the elite eight? Yeah, I think they do. Um, they've never kind of shied away from that talk uh, in terms of outside expectations. Of course, anytime you bring that up, they're going to say that their uh, internal expectations are so much higher than anything placed on them uh, outside. And, I mean, the biggest takeaway for me yesterday was seems like the exact same team, the exact same guys. I mean, obviously they return, you know, 11 of 13 scholarship players, so it is the same team, but mentally just kind of the personality they have just kind of the approach they have it just seems like the same guys i think that comes from uh having a veteran head coach rick barnes it's not going to change the way he does business based on wins or losses and comes from having good leadership guys like uh, admiral schofield and grant williams and stuff like that so i think they understand them i don't think they run away from them uh, and i think this coach's staff does a good job of telling them that when you're in this position you know every night at the office is a big night Grant Raymond here, here on the Swain event. event. Admiral Schofield letting, letting us all know that he's just more than, than an athlete. Uh, we go back and kind of think about him arriving on campus, uh, the arrival of Rick Barnes. How has he grown uh, since you have covered Tennessee basketball? Uh, I mean, it's pretty incredible. I mean, if you think back to the Maui Invitational, which was – uh, not last season, the year before that, obviously in November. Uh, he got suspended out there after the first game. They opened up against Wisconsin. Uh, he, I don't, can't remember how much he played. It was sparingly. He struggled a little bit. Uh, and then the next day they come out to play Oregon, and he's in street clothes, uh, suspended for, uh, I guess it was a violation of team rules or just a coach's decision, whatever. There's never really an explanation as to what happened. Uh, but Rick Barnes wasn't happy with something that he did, and he suspended him. And uh, he didn't really get back on the floor until Tennessee had come back uh, to Knoxville and had played a couple games. So uh, to go from that kid then to what he is now, I mean, he conducts himself uh, like a grown man. I mean, you read his tweet, uh, you read his quotes from yesterday talking about LeBron, and now he wants to be more than an athlete, be such a well-rounded person like LeBron is. I mean, it's incredible. I, I don't know how somebody at his age has that kind of self-awareness because I was an idiot uh, in college I don't I don't and same goes for you so I don't know how you athletes uh, are under such a microscope during your college years and talking to the press and doing all this stuff and expected to do so much uh, in the public eye and they come off so well I mean this, these kids speak their mind and they speak it well and they represent their university well he's a it's pretty crazy the, the, the distance he's come both on and off the floor. Yeah, I think, I think athletes, athletes are starting to realize how much power they have and, and how much weight their voices uh, really, really, really carry. And so uh, it's good that a guy like Adam Schofield is responsible, mature, and he can use that, that power for good. Some guys use it for bad, uh, but Adam Schofield, it's been cool to see him develop over the years. Uh, and that's, I have a ton of respect for LeBron in that fact because the, the, the impact he has on guys like Admiral, I mean, LeBron's been under the most intense microscope since he was 16 years old, and it's like the guy's never done a thing wrong. I mean, if he had done something wrong, uh, it would have it would have been reported by now, but the guy just, I mean, he continues to do uh, really good stuff and have a really, really good impact on, on the kids that watch it. Let's, Let's get, get into the X's and O's a little bit here. Um... 
this offense, yes, you have, you know, you have Grant, you have uh, Everett Schofield, you got a you know, wing player there, and, 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 and Bowden, but point guard play uh, over the years has, has kind of been a question mark, and we've seen guys step up. Uh, seems, seems like you'll like have maybe one, one true point guard. How, how is Lamonte preparing to maybe take more of a, a point guard role? Uh, we see Bone maybe take a, take a breather or maybe in foul trouble. Uh, how is Lamonte Turner uh, ready to kind of place his point guard and, and have a new role there uh, this year? I think he's fine with it. I think he grew up uh, playing point guard more than he did playing off the ball. Uh, honestly, and I asked Rick Barnes that yesterday during the press conference, do you like him more off the ball or do you like him more on the ball? He said he can do either. And, and him and Jordan Bone will be on the floor at the same time. Uh, and Lamonte can run point while Jordan's off the ball or Jordan obviously can run point while Lamonte's off the ball. And Ray Barnes said those are two of his better shooters uh, on the team and, and kind of wants them to be, wants Lamonte to continue to be aggressive and, and look for his shot and wants uh, Jordan Bone to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, and look for his shot because he is one of the better shooters on the team, according to to what these guys say uh, when you ask them about it. And uh, it is concerning. I agree that they they didn't add anything in the backcourt in the 2018 signing class and, and kind of get some depth at, at the guard. But uh, everybody you talked to yesterday uh, seems comfortable with the point guard position. But they're going to have to find consistency from Jordan Bell and Lamont Turner, whoever it is. Uh, they'll have Jordan Bowden as a as a third kind of backup emergency option, I guess, if something happens and they need somebody in a pinch. I think even Admiral could run a little bit of point forward like LeBron James does sometimes. So uh, They seem comfortable with the position when you ask them about it. Something Grant Williams struggled with last season was foul trouble. Uh, this season, if Grant were to get in foul trouble, do you think Derek Walker or John Fulkerson are ready to step up and provide some relief minutes, or do you think maybe – Rick Barnes would slide Admiral to the floor and rely on Eves Ponds or Jalen Johnson? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I think either could be good solutions. Uh, I think Eves Ponds, uh, talking to him yesterday, he seems like a different person, so much more comfortable uh, in this culture, in his surroundings. Last year it was like a language barrier. He, he understood more than he could speak when it came to English this year. It's, it's like he's comfortable having a conversation with you. Uh, and he wants to be known as the best defender uh, in the country. That's what he said yesterday. He wants to be known for his defense. He, he models his game after Patrick Beverly, of all people, uh, was what he was telling me yesterday. So and him and Jalen, if, if they can step in and, and do something on the wing, uh, that makes this team a lot deeper. It makes this team a lot better. Uh, I would, I would myself, I would slide Admiral to the four and have Kyle to five and see if you can get something out of those two. But, then again, Derek Walker, he's been in the system for a year. He had some flashes last year where he uh, showed some good things. So if he can take a big step forward, uh, having the summer, uh, having been here for the offseason, kind of make that, that leap between the first and second year, you know, he could be another good option that, that could add some depth. Grant Rainey here from Go Go Austin for Southern Swain and Men Talk Tennessee Basketball. Uh, what can we expect or what are you expecting from freshman DJ Burns? That's a good question. Uh, there are a lot of options for this team in the post uh, between Kyle, Grant, uh, Admiral, um, Derek Walker. I mean, even Zach Kent, he's, he's a 6'10 sophomore uh, guy that didn't do much last year that could do more this season. Uh, the question is, do you think it's worth getting a few minutes each night out of him, and can he be productive in those minutes? Uh, or do you want to redshirt him, uh, get him more physically and mentally prepared? Uh, for the college game and, and, and let him go for the 2019-20 season. Uh, they kind of did the same thing a couple of years ago with Jalen Johnson when Robert Hubs was at the wing playing 30 minutes a night. You know, why waste a year of eligibility getting 10 minutes a night out of him? Uh, if DJ can be effective, if he can earn some time and, and be productive on the floor, then I say roll with him. If, if not, if he's only going to play eight or nine minutes a night, uh, you might want to consider redshirting him, saving him, and, and getting him better for the next season. When we look back on the season in, in March, do you think that Rick Barnes, or maybe in just your opinion, that Tennessee will regret maybe not going out and getting that veteran point guard like they had in James Daniel last year? Or are you comfortable riding with Jordan Bone and Lamonte Turner? Uh, really, it depends on what they look like, you know, when the season gets going. Uh, Jordan Bone was, he was as devastated as anybody last season the way it ended with 
a uh, little Chicago, and uh, everybody says he's had a really good off season, and you know speaks really highly of the work he put in over the summer. But until you see it on the floor, and until you see some uh, consistency, that's the biggest thing. He's shown flashes. He's shown talent uh, ever since his you know the first few games of his freshman season. It's just a matter of him doing it consistently uh, and knowing what you're going to get night in and night out at point guard. Uh, me personally, if, if they could have found another grad transfer guard, uh, they had one committed, obviously, and it didn't work out. And he ended up at Louisville and Quan Four. But, I mean, that's a guy that you really could have used because you're not tying up a scholarship in next year's class and stuff like that. But if Bone can be the consistent guy and if he's changed his game the way people talk about him changing his game, they should be fine. But it's just a matter of you got to see it to believe it. What is – we, we know, know all the strengths. strengths. We, we know, know this team is, is basically, basically coming back, back uh, intact, intact, except for the addition of DJ Burns. Burns. But what, what, what are, are the weaknesses, weaknesses of this team? team? If, if I'm, I'm going up against Tennessee, Tennessee and uh, I'm looking, looking at Tennessee, Tennessee as a whole, what's, what's the, the area where I think I, think I, I could be successful uh, against, against Tennessee? Tennessee? Uh, I think you could try to still get Grant Williams in foul trouble. That's another area where, where you need to see it to believe it. Uh, he struggled with those early fouls last year, and, and he he struggles or he struggled last year, uh, the first couple of years of his career. With uh, If something goes against him early in the game, it, it seemed like it would mentally affect him uh, for the rest of the night. Honestly, if, if, you know, if I'm trying to scout this team, I'm trying to shut down Admiral and I'm trying to shut down Grant, and I'm going to make these other guys beat me. Uh, I'm going to make Jordan Bowden beat me from the wing. I'm going to make Lamonte Turner beat me. Uh, Jordan Bone beat me from the backcourt. So, since he has options, they have a they have a lot of depth. They have guys that you know. I think they have five or six different guys that scored 20 or more points uh, in a game last season. They can beat you in different ways. I would just I would try to take out those two and, and make the make the perimeter beat you. Well, Grant, uh, weekend is upon us. Uh, we got the Bears. Um, in the one, one in the division. Well, right, right now, Grant's, Grant's focused, focused on, on the Braves bouncing back tonight with Clayton Kershaw on the hill for the Dodgers. Last night, man. What a, what a last night was not fun. Last night was good for my word production because I had to do something to keep my mind off of uh, the game that was in front of me. My goodness, that was, that was rough, man. All right, before we let you go, let the good people know what's going on at uh, Go Balls 24-7. A uh, ton of stuff, a uh, ton of even football-related stuff, even though it's the bye week, all that stuff keeps going. Uh, getting ready for the trip to Auburn next week and, and a ton of stuff from Basketball Media Day uh, yesterday. We got to talk to Rick for 30 minutes. We got to talk to, you know, just about every player on the roster was available for us to talk to. So we got photos, videos, practice highlights, uh, and a ton of free stuff. Uh, go balls 247com after, uh, with basketball season less than uh, about a month away right now. Uh, for once, it's a really highly anticipated month, too. Let's, Let's do it. Let's, Let's get it. Great, uh, Randy. Have, have a great weekend, weekend man. man. Appreciate, Appreciate your time. time. Thanks for having me, fellas. Uh, that, that is Grant Randy, the Lost 247 here on the show, show talking about Tennessee, Tennessee uh, basketball. Um, take, take a look at the text box before we wrap up today's show. We've got about 10 minutes. John Harris says, Bank should be a fullback. You can catch out the backfield. Not yet. Uh, and on the fullbacks, that was the most interesting difference to me because Austin Pope had played 13 snaps at fullback in almost every game this season against Georgia, one snap at fullback, and it was that 31 play where it was play action and he rolled out to the sideline and JG uh, threw an errant pass and, and didn't connect with him. So I, I do think Austin Pope struggles at fullback the last couple of games, plus that fumble at, at the red zone somewhat eliminated the fullback role, I don't know if that was just a Georgia game thing or if that's something that they'll continue to go to do going forward because they're only three fullbacks. Yeah, he, 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 he's a tight end. He does line up in the backfield as a lead blocker when they run. Correct. And John Harris also questions the tight end coach. He says Niedermeyer's cool and recruit with position of the position players have been a weak link. And you got to understand something. The tight end room, they got, they got coaching. I mean, you take Niedermeyer. Tennessee also has uh, John Lilly, who came from Georgia, who is not on the field coach, but he's coaching too, and he's right there working with the tight ends. And so here's a, a problem when you switch your offensive scheme overnight from finesse to power to – you know, 
just I guess a, a, a passing shotgun uh, spread offense to a more pro style optional offense or multiple offense is that you have guys who are in spots that physically they may not be able to play that spot at the highest level. Uh, Austin Pope, he is he's not a pro style type of tight end that can go in and bang like Isaac Nada, who can run like a receiver in the passing game and block like a fullback in a running game. He like Austin's not that player, and he's trying to be that player, and he's only had a couple of months to transform himself to be that type of player. And then you have you know Eli Wolf. We heard so many great things about him last year. That okay, he would be the next guy after you know his brother graduates. He's just as good, if not better, because he was faster, because he had really good hands. But guess what? If you don't block, you can't play in this offense. And so we haven't seen anything of, of Eli. They have to stop using him in blocking yeah. scenarios. And then you look at Dominic Wood Anderson. Yes, he is very talented, but he's a Juco. And Juco guys, it's a toss up. I'm sorry, but how do you coach up? Having a hitch route on fourth down, and you not going up with two hands instead of one, let the guy grab your arm. I know they're taught how to catch the football on five yard routes. You just got to be a little bit tougher and get those guys' hands off of you. So I think the tight ends are being coached up. I just think it's it's the personnel change. It's the personnel change, and and you're asking some guys to maybe do some things that physically they can't do. But it's a part of it because you can't just do everything that Bush Jones did last year. You have to run what you are going to run here in Tennessee and also try to play to the strengths of the players that you currently have. That's why it's a transition. That's why the first year is going to be the toughest year. So I don't think you question Brian Niedermeyer's coaching ability. Tight ends is not a real difficult position to coach. It's not rocket science. It's really simple. Uh, but, but they, they just need better guys. guys. That's, That's why, why they have two highly rated tight ends committed. And they have been committed for a very long time because those tight ends in high school, they see opportunities to come play early. They see it. Tennessee wouldn't have two tight ends as good as the tight ends we have committed if there were not opportunities for them to come in and play right away. So, I would point the brakes a little bit on pointing the finger at, at, at Nehemiah, which I understand is easy to do. Yeah. Let's get to uh, let's get to Titanville. Titanville, good morning. Good morning, Jason, and good morning, Charlie. Uh, we got we got me and we got Ben. Charlie is out today. All right. Hello, he's playing, man. He's playing, how are you? He's playing hooky. I'm doing well, Titanville. How are you? I'm doing all right. Jason, there's a song that I want to sing to you. It came from an old movie. The Tennessee Titans is gonna shuffle o the buffalo. That's what they're gonna do. The Tennessee Titans is gonna race their record to four and one. Yes, they are. Titans, Bill. Yes, sir. Your NFL team is the Titans. And who, yes. does, who does the Titans play this weekend? The Buffalo Bills. The Bills. So the Titans and the Bills play, and you are Titans, Bill. Exactly. I mean, this is, this is, this is a dream coming true right here this weekend. Exactly. So they're going to shuffle out the Buffalo. <laughs> Titans, Titans cannot lose this game, man. You know, two I two great wins. Yeah, game. they can't. They can't. It's, it's NFL, NFL, so you never know. So unless if they think they can win by just showing up, if you think you're going to win by just showing up, buddy, that's big trouble in Little China. <laughs> yes, yes, Titans, Bill. You, you are correct. I'm happy for your Titans. I'm happy for you and Charlie and all the Titans fans. Fans, at the end of the day, they are in state team. And of course, let's see, your Bears are off. Hey, we. We are. Yeah. So there's going to be some other pro games that I'm going to predict. I like Green Bay over Detroit. 
I like Pittsburgh over Washington, and I like Cincinnati over Miami. Titansville, Pittsburgh plays the Falcons this week. Oh, do they? Okay, they play the Falcons. <laughs> oh, yeah, when I think of Falcons, I think of that one guy who used to. Oh, my buddy Seth. Yes. Yes, Titansville. My say. And I call them, and I still think of them as the Maltese Falcons. Maltese Falcons. I'll, I'll tell Stokes you said that. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Titans Bill. Thanks okay. for the phone call, man. Good to hear from you. Titans Bill, singing to us this morning. Speaking of uh, Titans, how about uh, former ball signed with the Titans? Oh, uh, LaTroy Lewis. LaTroy Lewis signed with the uh, Titans. I didn't know Nashville was Rocky Top, but hey, whatever, man. Whatever. He said he was good to be back in Rocky Top. I guess he meant the whole entire state. We'll roll with it. Good to see LaTroy Lewis back in Tennessee. Uh, he started with the, I want to say the Raiders, and then he went to the Texans. I had actually a really good showing with the Texans, and now he is with the Titans. Hope he can stick there. Uh, here in uh, State of Tennessee. Your phone calls, your tweets, your messages to recruits, fans, they, they, they're not going to do anything, okay? Who's, who's calling? Or they're not going to move the needle. Who, dude, who knows? You know, you have, you have fan shows and, you know, fan blogs, people that call the recruits and do interviews and stuff like that. It happens. But as, as we, we get, get these, these decommitments, decommitments showing up and as Tennessee, Tennessee is recruiting this weekend, weekend in a huge way, um, just, just be, be careful with tweeting recruits. Don't, don't be weird. weird. Just, just don't be weird. weird. Yeah, Please. That, that's a little weird. Chris from Buffalo says, Titans Bill, come, come at me, bro. Come, come at me. me. John, John Harris, let's, let's be honest, honest our tight ends have flat out in his blocks. Yeah, because physically they just – they can't block defensive ends. They used to be 140-pound tight ends, 135-pound tight ends, and was never asked to do that. Now they have to do that. So uh, it's a little bit of, of personnel, too. Monday, we will not be mad at Tennessee losing a win again because Tennessee is off this week. So enjoy the weekend. Have a great weekend. For Vivian King and Jason Swain, Swain event fueled by Daddy Barbecue, Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant in America. Our three powered by Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. They expanding the services, reinventing men's health. Have a great weekend. Our three of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T.